Hello and welcome to the final day of action here at the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships 2024. We have had incredible racing all week down there in that pool, the beautiful London Aquatic Centre. When I tell you we have crowned not just champions, but we have selected our teams for the para swimming and the swimming over the Olympics and Paralympic Games this coming summer in Paris. It has been an amazing week of racing and it is going to finish tonight. When I tell you the schedule, the race, it's going to be fun, it's going to be fast, it's going to be furious. Stick around to the end of the night because that men's 200, what a way to finish. Let's get into it. Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final day of action here at the Aquatics GB Swimming Championships 2024. Uh, it is a pleasure, like tradition, we always have our head coaches uh, for the swimming program for Aquatics GB, Bill Furness, and for the para swimming, uh, we have Rob Aubrey. Joining me here in the studio to, of course, find out how it's been going so far. Guys, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. I do not envy your jobs. Um, but Rob, I want to come to you first. Let's start with the para program. How has it been? Has it lived up to expectations for you this week? Yeah, um, being here in like, um, London, iconic pool for us uh, from 2012. And I think to, for the athletes to be in this integrated meet um, alongside our, our Olympic partners is great from, from warm up to the call up rooms. It's really helped some of our performance drive through. And I think we've seen that this week with some of the performances from both uh, from the, the males and the females coming through, really. Because, I mean, there really has been some spectacular things that have been happening on that side of things. We've seen a few world records. We've seen British records. Have there been any surprises for you or was uh, these sorts of performances expected on your side? Um, surprises come from everywhere. And I think just even it, some of our athletes are well known to us pulling out some massive performances. So Poppy um, in, in some of her events pull out some massive performances to kind of hit that world stage with some new athletes like Olivia coming through. Um, and some of our seasoned pros coming through just hitting performance after performance at this time of year is, is a really great opportunity to see going into the Paralympic Games. And, uh, you know, on your side of things, the selection process obviously works different than the swimming. It all comes down to the selectors. So we've had a lot of those athletes hit that time, but it's going to come down to sort of placings because you can only take three per event. There's more men, but, uh, sorry, more women versus the amount of men you can take onto the team. It, it works a little bit differently on your end. Yeah, I think what we've seen is that we can take three per event. And what we see in some of our events, we had four people qualify and our times were really tough. So to see that upwards pressure for some of our season pro athletes, some of our new athletes coming through is really exciting. So it's a real juggling act now for us as selectors to kind of go through that process, look at our team of up to 32 to see who we can take to the Summer Games. Well, good luck. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing summer for you, but I do not uh, envy that choice. And it, it, over to you, Bill. Um, you know, we, in the same vein, we've had some amazing things happen in that pool this week. But with the swimming program, that selection policy, if they hit that time, they touch first in that final, they're going. So we've had guaranteed selections already. Absolutely. And, and been some really good performances. Um, been really pleased, but particularly with the depth. And I'll be honest, um, you know, the selection meeting is tomorrow. It's going to be a difficult meeting, but um, they've given us some nice problems. You know, it, it's, it's easy if... Um, you know, there's not much depth, but there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of good performances, and there'll be a bit of head scratching tomorrow to get the absolute best athletes on on the train to go to Paris. And is you know, you sort of say that selection day is tomorrow. It's always it's sort of bittersweet, I suppose. We were we were talking about it off camera. It's bittersweet. You, you're sort of making someone's day and sort of changing their lives, making their dreams come true. But there's also going to be some people that are going to be disappointed. It is, and, that, and that's the beauty or, or the, the pain of, of, a, of a sudden death trial. So some countries might look at performances through the year. We're one of the countries who say, that's the day, 
that's the time you've got to perform and we pick our team from that. So Olympic trials is always a bit special because you, you get either elation or desperation. There's no in between. Um, so there's some really um, happy people this week and there's some people who are going to be pretty disappointed. But at the end of the day, when, when you do go to an Olympic Games, you know, you, it, it's very, it's gladiatorial. It's on the day. And what this does do is prepare our athletes to be gladiators. So we know the people who do get on this team tomorrow are very good at performing on the day under pressure. And I think it goes back to what we were sort of saying about uh, athletes being able to handle that pressure on the day. Giving them a taste of that here is important um, because when you go to that world stage, they're going to find it there. So it's preparation. This is, I, I suppose, training. Absolutely. You, you've got to you've got to be very good in the arena. There's no, in, any, in any high performance sport, you've got to be excellent when it counts. And, and one of our problems, you know, if we went back sort of 12, 16 years ago, we, 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 we would not do our best performance of the season at a major championships like an Olympics or a Worlds. What we've done very well, certainly in Rio and Tokyo, is most of our team did their best performance, certainly of that season or of their life at the biggest occasion. And that's what you've got to do if you're going to be successful in an Olympic Games. Well, hopefully we're going to see that uh, in Paris for both the Olympics and the Paralympics as well. Good luck for the summer. Like I said, I do not envy your jobs. Thank you so much for coming in and joining me. Good luck tonight as well. Maybe we're adding some more uh, names to that list. But of course, it is the new branding, uh, Aquatics GP. It isn't just swimming and para swimming. Uh, it covers all the sports. So we've got the artistic swimming. Uh, and we're very lucky right now. We have world silver and bronze medalists in the technical and the free duos, Izzy, Izzy Thorpe and Kate Shortman. Now, Kate Shortman also won a bronze medal in Fukuoka, first individual uh, bronze medal, medal in fact, for Great Britain in a very, very long time. So keep an eye out for them uh, at the Olympics over the summer. They're gonna be making waves there and doing amazing things. Uh, so that's the artistic swimming. As well as that, we have the diving. Of course, the diving is coming up. So the Speedo Aquatics uh, GB Diving Championships is happening at Sandwell Aquatic Center the 23rd to the 26th of May this year. You can see Jack Law there. He's going to be joined by some absolute superstars, Andrea Spendolini, Siri X. We've got Dan Goodfellow. We have Grace Reed. They're all going to be there uh, trying to uh, qualify themselves onto that team. So tickets go on sale next week at AquaticsGP.com. But of course, bringing it back to tonight, bringing it back to what is happening in that pool. Just a quick recap for those at home who aren't sure uh, how the selection works. If an athlete in the Paris final tonight hits that time and touches the wall first, they are on the team. We're also going to be looking at qualifying some relays tonight. Uh, if they touch second, then of course, uh, and hit that nomination time, they're going to have to wait for the selectors. We just caught up with Bill and Rob. So uh, let's take a look at who's made the team so far. This is in the swimming program. There you can see, look, we've got uh, the likes of Abby Wood, Freya Colbert. They have had absolute stellar weeks, not just qualifying themselves onto the team, but hitting PBs. Abby hadn't had one since Tokyo. There's Adam Peaty. He did it on night one with the fastest 100 meter breaststroke so far this year in the world. Ollie Morgan crushing that British record. Spectacular to see. Betty Harris is there with Kathleen Dawson. Excuse me. That was a race and a half. I tell you what, sorry, I just got choked up. Uh, Dan Jervis looked so emotional there. He was uh, so excited to make it in the 1500. He was over the moon, he had his whole family in. Anna Hopkins been putting in a great performance, as has Max Litchfield, another British record, took his British record back off Duncan Scott. Um, he had a, an amazing 400 IM. Uh, we got Matt Richards there. He's hit the nomination time and qualified himself in that men's 100 free. He hit it in the 50 and he's going for it tonight again in the two. There's Honey Osren, a surprise in the uh, women's 200 back. She had an amazing race and qualified herself to her first Olympics. Joe Litchfield did it in the relay. That men's 100 fly, it was a shocker. Duncan Scott's there. He did it in the two IM. Uh, such a sort of uh, a consistent performer. He's always performing at uh, an amazing level. Tom Dean as well did it in that relay and of course hit that nomination time for the 2IM. Uh, there's Abby Wood and Katie Shanahan. She's one of the ones I was talking about that hit those nomination times but was in second place. Ben Proud. The man in that 53, I tell you what, 21-2, amazing speed. And this is uh, Jonathan Marshall. He came second as well, uh, but hit that nomination time. There's the four by 200 meter for the women, and this is the four by 100 for the men. 
So a lot of athletes, uh, Alex Cahoon, I, I need to get his name in there. A lot of athletes already made it onto the team, but the para nomination times are in front of you. So of course, these are all the athletes that have hit the time, but they're gonna have to wait until uh, the end of this week until the selections have been made. You can see uh, the first and half of the second tile there, that is all the uh, the female program. And then on the men, we have Stephen Clegg, Will Ellard, he hit a world record, it was fantastic the other day. Mark Thompson, Cameron Vernkham, Reese Darby. For the likes of the women, we've got Alice Ty, Poppy Maskell, Scarlett Humphrey. We have uh, uh, Tony Shaw, Ellie Chalice, the, the list just goes on. So that is uh, that is the parasite, uh, of course. These lists could all change. Tonight, we might be adding more to that. So, Andy Jameson, welcome. We've been hearing a lot from you all this week. <laughs> you certainly have. I have to say, uh, I'm exhausted. My brain is fried. It's so full of stats, I can't believe it. Well, I tell you what, one more night, and it's going to be a great night. So, I've made, I've got a few picks for you. We're going to start with the men's 200 meter back. So, let's take a look. Tell, talk me through this race. Who are your picks? Who's looking good? Well, I've got to say that uh, there's two guys that have not made it on the team yet. That's Luke Greenbank and Brody Williams. And I'd be quite surprised if they don't both make it, but uh, the pressure now is really on. They didn't make it on the 100 meters backstroke. So this is it. It's a one shot wonder. I mean, it's tough. Yeah. Olympic medalist and he's not yet on the team. And of course, Ollie Morgan was there. He did it in the 100 and he's hit the time this season as well. So, I mean, I caught up with Luke earlier this morning and he seemed quite calm and chill about it all and sort of like had his head in the game. Who knows whether those nerves are going to come through tonight but he was looking super smooth out there this morning. Jonathan Marshall is there as well. He hit that nomination time in that uh, the men's 100, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Now moving quickly along, you see Maisie Summers-Newton there for the women's 100-meter breaststroke para. Uh, she's uh, had an, a stormer. She's a Paralympic medalist. She's world championship medalist. I, love, I have to say, I love her interviews. I mean, she's a, she's a great swimmer. I've got to say, she's a fantastic swimmer. I love listening to her. She's a fantastic talker. She really is. She really is. And after hitting it in the 2 a.m. yesterday, she said to me, the pressure's off now. She's so relaxed. I think she's just here yeah. to enjoy tonight's racing, yeah. but she's going in the fastest qualifier. Uh, we, speaking of fast, the women's 100 meter freestyle, it is going to be fast. We qualified the women's 4x2 the other night. We're going to see if we can do it tonight in the 4x1. But who is looking good out there, Andy? Well, to be honest, I think that Anna Hopkins, it's, uh, it's hers to lose, really. She's so good. She made the 50 already. She there looks she fantastic. Is. Yeah, she yeah. looks absolutely stunning. She's in super shape, very, very fast. I mean, look at that. She just looks she looks uh, superb. It's an interesting one, though, for me, is, uh, is the second spot. Um, and, you know, I'm not quite sure whether Eva Akaro is going to do it. I think she might be able to do it. Qual she's 17, qualified in a lifetime best. That's a little bit scary, second fastest. So she could do it, but right behind her, Freya Anderson, Freya Colbert, Abby Woods, and they're just lining up behind her. So it's going to be fascinating. It is going to be fast. And, you know, it was nice to see Freya Anderson in there as well. She was suffering from glandular fever. We haven't seen her racing this week. You know, obviously there's those discretionary picks. She's incredibly fast. And uh, we saw this morning, even off the back of glandular fever, look, Looking fit, looking fast. Yeah, she said she's 90% back. Uh, I'd be very, very surprised if they don't use their discretionary pick for her. They need her. We need her. Yeah, she's we really do. good. She's really good. Um, now, moving into my pick of the night, the men's 200 meter freestyle. This is going to oh. be a cracker. I'm so excited for this, Andy. I can't even begin to tell you. It is it like really a is. world's final out there. The 147 low to make the final is crazy. Yeah. And before we get into the final, the B final has names like Max Litchfield. Uh, I, I mean, we just had. Uh, Jacob Whittle. I yes. mean, it's names that you expect in a final yes. in that B final. You know, I was just about to say any other country would be delighted to have the B final as their A final. But then if you think about this, you go, you go Olympic champion, you go world champion, you go Olympic silver medalist, you go previous world champion, four different guys all in the same race. They're all different guys and only two of them can get the individual race. So Olympic champion, Olympic silver, world champion, world champion, two of those guys are not gonna make it. Unbelievable, on the individual. But of course, the four by two, so important. And they are they are defending Olympic champions. So, I, and it's lanes four, five, six, and seven, those guys. I mean, there's the list in front of you. It is like we said, world, yeah. world class. Look From top that. to bottom, one to eight. It really could be anyone's game, but you know, that top four is gonna qualify that men's four by two, like you say. Uh, who's it gonna go to? Well, we're just gonna have to wait and see. So that is the men's four by two. Um, I'm gonna bring in the schedule now. I've got to send you over now to, uh, to commentary, but let's bring in the schedule because it's not just those races. There's so much for you to get through. Uh, we're starting with the women's 800 meter freestyle Paris fastest 
first heat. We then have the men's 50 meter backstroke Paris para final. That is a para event only. We then move into the men's 200 meter backstroke. There's no para event in that. That is, uh, there's no para uh, Olympic event in that. We then have the women's 100 meter breaststroke. We then move into the second half of the night, uh, the fast end of the evening, the women's 100 meter freestyle and the men's 200 meter freestyle. So that is how it's gonna look for your evening. It is gonna be an amazing night of racing. Stick round right to the very end. Like we said, we're finishing with that uh, men's 200, but it is over to the women's 800 meter freestyle fastest heat and over to the incredible Andy Jamieson and Paul Noble in commentary. Let's get into it. Well, thank you, John, and it's, uh, it's all go here, isn't it? It really is. And the first race is gonna be just fascinating. Can Emily Bloxage win her second national title of this championships, her third senior title in her life, and she's 14 years of age. She is, she's had some, some really impressive swims already this week, so I imagine her confidence is building. This will be her last one of the week, so really interesting seeing what she can do here. There's uh, Emma Price in lane zero. This is actually the final heat of the women's 800 meters freestyle. We passed this heat. So we had um, we had four heats this morning. This is the fifth heat. And in the heats, you can swim 10 lanes. In the finals, we generally only swim eight lanes. It's the international rules. But uh, because this is the final and the fastest heat, we're going to be using all the, all the lanes in this. Here's that Amber Keegan in lane number seven. Very good open water swimmer. Represented Great Britain in Doha at the World Championships earlier this year. There's Lucy Fox, six on the 1500 meters, fourth on the 400. So this could be right in the middle for her, a really good one. Michaela Glenister of Sterling, bronze on the 1500, fifth on the 400. She's had a good week this week. But uh, these center lanes really will be great fun to watch. Leah Crisp, she's on the uh, on the train to Paris already on that uh, on the open water team. Fifth on the uh, 800. Six on the 400. So here's Fleur Lewis, Fleur Lewis silver on the 1500 meters freestyle. Fourth uh, bronze medal, excuse me, on the 400 freestyle. But Bloxage in the centre. What? Well, she's a lovely young lady. She really is. She's absolutely delightful. She's right in the centre, the fastest seed in lane number four. There she is with that yellow hat. Yeah, she's a very smart swimmer, and I think she she definitely comes across older than 14. She's very mature. Even the way she races is very mature. She's very kind of switched on, takes everything in her stride. So I'm sure she's got a very bright future ahead of her. She's going to have to drop a bit of time to get near that nomination time for the Olympics, but very interested to see how fast she's going to go. Take your marks. The final heat. It is heat declared winner. The final, the fastest heat of the women's 800 meters freestyle. And right in the center, Emily Bloxage of the city of Salford. Well, the consideration time for the Olympic Games, it's called the nomination time, is very quick. It's 8.25.8. .8. And uh, if she's going to do it, uh, Emily Bloxage is going to have to go a lifetime best by 6.8 seconds. That's a, it's a huge amount. But age 14, those kind of crazy things do tend to happen every now and again, don't they, Molly? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this year alone, we've seen her drop nearly 10 seconds on her 1500. So it's definitely not out of her reach. She's going to have to really push from the start. And I think she might potentially be doing this race on her own if she is going for that. Well, she's uh, started fairly hard here. This is interesting to see how she's attacking this race. It's 16 lengths of the pool, this uh, 800 meters freestyle. And she set a lifetime best. She split a 62.2 seconds at the 100. So let's just see the time here. 62.2. Oh, my word. 61.3. Well, she's a full second just about inside her lifetime best split at the 100. She did look like she was pushing it. But, uh, Molly, that's, uh, well, it's either going to be something special or it's going to be a world of pain. <laughs> yeah, it definitely could be a painful one for her. But I think, yeah, this is exactly what she needs to do, you know. It's, it's the last race of the week. If, if it's going to be painful either way. So I think she's got to attack it and just see what she's got left at the end. Well, her lifetime best, she's uh, set the year, this year, it's the season's best. And it is uh, 8.32.6. And uh, it's actually the uh, national age group 
her record for the 14-year-old. She is 14, but my goodness me, she's an amazing swimmer. Double 1500 meters freestyle senior national champion, age 14. She won it last year, age 13, this year, age 14. So let's just have a quick look at the split at the 200. She was almost a second ahead at the uh, 100 meters turn. And Molly, 207.0 at the 200 she was. Oh, it's fast, 205.48. She's really showing intent here. You can definitely see her stroke rate's a lot higher than the 1500. So I honestly think she's going in with a mentality of she has nothing to lose here, and I love this approach. Oh, she's gone off very fast indeed, breathing to her left at the moment, down this, uh, this way down the pool. And uh, just breathing every two strokes. Some uh, distance swimmers like to go bilateral breathing, breathing first to the left and then to the right. Not using an awful lot of kick either. But uh, what, what, did you, uh, what did you prefer, Molly? Did you do the bilateral breathing, one to the left, one to the right, or did you uh, end up just staying on one side? I used to do bilateral breathing, but I think that's because I never really competed freestyle at any kind of level, to be honest, other than outside of the IM uh, events I used to compete in. So I guess I never really got into that race mentality of breathing every two, but it's definitely better for them. Helps regulate their breathing. She can keep an eye on the rest of the field as well. She'll be changing them which way she's breathing each stroke, so um, each length. So definitely a good tactic here. Well, that's the 300 turn. This is the uh, fastest heat of the women's 800 free. Bloxage leading from Fleur Lewis in second, third. It is uh, Michaela Glenister, Wilson in four, fifth is Dyson, sixth is uh, Crisp in three. But, uh, here is the uh, clear leader at the moment. He's about uh, four metres ahead at the moment, is uh, Emily Bloxage. We'll check the split here. This is the 350 metre turn, I think it is, yes. Uh, and she was at 344.1. 344. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, she's actually on. She's on pace for the uh, nomination time for the Olympic Games. And if she can do that, that would be something special. It'd be a great way to start the night. You know, we've got such an exciting night ahead. We have obviously rounding off the night with the men's 200 freestyle, which I think is going to be the star of the night. But so many exciting things coming up. We have the women's 100 breaststroke, women's 100 freestyle. So, but yeah, she's, she's really attacking it here. And it's a great way to start the night. So 4.16 was her lifetime best, 4.16.4. She's 4.15, so she's 1.4 seconds ahead of her lifetime best, but she needs to be eight, or sorry, excuse me, six seconds in total. So she's just falling off it a tiny bit if she's going to achieve this uh, Olympic nomination time. I think we're asking an awful lot because uh, she is only 14, um, and that's uh, nomination time very quick indeed. But just at the moment, it's, uh, well, it's Emily Bloxage leading. Second place uh, fairly comfortably is Fleur Lewis in that black hat of Loughborough University. Then... One closer to us from those two is Michaela Glenister of Sterling. Up there in three is, uh, is Leah Crisp. And then up in one is uh, Ella Dyson. Yeah, it's a massive asphalt here. Like you said, it's a six second PB that she needs to get. Um, she's currently ranked 14th fastest female ever in Britain in this event. Um, to jump up to that qualifying time, she will be ranked around fifth. So it'd be a huge jump for her. Um, but like I said, she's 14, big PBs do come and she's already proved that in the 1500 this year. So I, I wouldn't put it past her, but I think she's gonna have to pick up the pace slightly here. Well, she's a little bit, she's uh, getting a little bit closer to her lifetime best splits now. She's only one point, she's been 1.5 seconds ahead. Now she's just 1.2 seconds ahead. Just, I say, it's the fastest she's ever gone. And uh, she's 1.2 seconds ahead of her own lifetime best splits. It, it, it is still brilliant, isn't it, as a 14-year-old? Yeah, absolutely. And, like, she's out there on her own, I think. Having to go out there, pace this as a 14-year-old, it's all just experience for her here, I think. It's, she's got such a bright future ahead. And the fact that she can go out there already, kind of attacking a race, knowing that she's going to be on her own is, like I said, she has a really mature head on her shoulders. She speaks really well in interviews. So I think she's going to be a really bright, um, a bright star for the future. I think what is interesting, when she went through the 1500 metres, when she won the, uh, the gold earlier on this week, uh, the national title on the 1500 freestyle, her split at 800 was 838. The lifetime best is 8.32, so she's only six seconds behind the lifetime best to her feet going through the 800 on that 1500 freestyle. Yeah, and we've seen that earlier this week as well with Tobias Robinson. He hit a PB at 800 during the 1500, so he obviously had an amazing 800 last night picking up the gold there, um, slightly outside of the nomination time, but 
he is already on the plane to Paris for the for the open water, so kind of no pressure on him this week. So I think, yeah, the swims that Amelie's had earlier this week will just give her confidence coming into this. Well, it certainly will. Let's uh, let's try and get a, get this crowd into it because uh, she really has a great chance of doing a lifetime best here. Be great to see a close uh, going closer to the 8:32.6, which is a lifetime best. A split then 6:56.7. So she's still uh, nine tenths of a second inside of her lifetime best at that turn. And uh, well, she's, she's going to be very close to the 8.30, you know, and that would be really something special. I think she's going to break her lifetime best. And if she does that, she's going to set a new, this is ridiculous, isn't it? 14 year old <laughs> national age group record. <laughs> It's yeah, amazing. and her last chance to do it, she it's her birthday in two days, so she turns 15 very soon, so I'm sure that'll be in her mind here. So the bell denoting 100 metres to go, and this the fastest heat of the women's 800 metres freestyle. The leader very clearly is Emily Bloxage. She's about five metres ahead of the swimmer in second place, that's Fleur Lewis. With uh, third at the moment still is uh, Michaela Glenister, and fourth just up there in lane three is Leah Crisp with uh, Ella Dyson. Uh, back uh, one place behind but uh, well she's going very well she's gone from the start it was a gutsy uh, approach to the race really quick out she was one and a half seconds underneath her lifetime best after three lengths it's a 16 length race and she's really sprinting now she's going well she looks great she's really picked up the pace you can see her straight race definitely gone up the legs are coming into action a little bit more and she's got nothing to lose she's got 25 meters less let's see if she can dip under that 830 mark well, a lifetime best is 8.32.6. If she can go under that and go a lifetime best, it would be great. 8.32.6 is going to be close. 28, 29, come on. Come on, Emily. 8.32.6. Oh, 8.32.61. Her lifetime best was 8.32.65. Destroyed a lifetime best by <laughs> four one hundredths of a second. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Kisses to the crowd, age 14. Oh, she's such a good personality. I love her. She speaks so well after her races. And yeah, I think very close to her PB, a little bit off. So new age group record at the very last chance. Good on her. Double national champion. 1,500 is in the 800 meters. There she is in that yellow hat. Oh, she's a bag of fun, isn't she? Goodness me. Oh, it's so good to see it. She definitely doesn't look like she's just swam an 800 freestyle no. either, but such a strong shot from her, you know, she took it out with real intent and she led from the start and I think she just kept building and building throughout that. Well, it's the, uh, it was that attack down that first 150, 200, she was 1.5 seconds ahead, started getting very, very excited about that Olympic nomination time. Maybe a little bit quick for her optimal pacing, but um, it is a lifetime best, so playing with her pace, playing with the different ways of swimming, a good idea as such a youngster. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like we said, about her being here is all about experience. She'll have European juniors coming up and it'll just lead her on to bigger and better things. So confirmation of the result of the women's 800 meters free starts, the final heat, and she is national champion again, double national champion, Amelie Bloxage of City of Salford and a new 14 year olds national age group record. She's the senior champion. Fleur Lewis the silver, Michaela Glenister the bronze. Well, really looking forward to what uh, to hearing what uh, Emily's got to say to John Mason. She's done it again, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Emily Blockstitch. Her <laughs> Emily, you won the 1500 the other day, British champion. We had second in that four. You've just got a PB and won the 800 two days before your 15th birthday. It's not been a bad week. No, it's not. I'm really happy with all the outcomes this week. I couldn't really ask for anything more, and I think it's a really nice way to end the week. Yeah, and you know, you've been really, really impressive. We've watched you come along uh, a, a, long, a long way uh, since last year. So looking forward to the next year, what are some of the things you're going to be working on? What are you going to be focusing on? What are we going to see in 12 months? Um, definitely some work on my turns and definitely my kick at the end <laughs> and just trying to get better. Just trying to get better. Will you carry on with that? You've been absolutely amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, Amelie Bloxage. And Fleur, we've seen some, some great swims from you. I know you weren't too happy with your 1500 the other night, but you just said that felt a lot better. It looked it as well. Yeah, I think I was a lot more relaxed on this race. I think I was really nervous before my 15 and I think I kind of let that get the better of me, but... I just tried to enjoy this race and I knew 
Um, I'll be doing it with some really great girls, so I am happy with it. And happy that you programmed, son. Look, congratulations on that silver medal. Now, Michaela Glenister. <laughs> Got some fans in, I think. Uh, you know, you've had a big week as well. Program's done. It's got to feel nice. But uh, just give us a look back, not just at this race, over the week. How's it been on your end? It's been a tough week. I've been on my PBs, so I expected a bit more of myself. But I haven't done bad, and I can't really complain with two bronze medals. No, not at all. And, you know, I think athletes as well are sort of their own biggest critics, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that smile, amazing to see. Congratulations on that bronze medal. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. Here's the uh, medal ceremony for this women's 800 metres freestyle. And Emily Bloxich winning the uh, gold medal, her second gold medal. Medals presented by Graham Marchbank, the uh, AGB board chair. So there are the medalists. Bloxich wins the gold, the silver to uh, Fleur Lewis, the bronze to Michaela Glenister. And the Aquatics GB chair presenting those medals. Great to see some, uh, well, some new presenters of medals here. We've had mums and dads, we've had sisters, we've got chair of uh, Aquatics GB, we've got everything here, haven't we? Well, next race up, uh, this one's for you, Paul. Thanks, Andy. It is the multi-class. 50 metres backstroke, four men. I say multi-class, there's only one swimmer in this one, and that is Lyndon Longhorn. Well, what a character Lyndon is. Been around for a few years now, Lyndon. Looks like he means business tonight, though. I've seen him laughing and joking alongside Harvey Phillips, but this one... Big event for Lyndon, this 50 backstroke. Possible relay places up for grabs for the Paris team. He went 53-2-1 in qualification. His British record is 50.12. So, some way outside the nomination time that he needs to achieve, but Lyndon will have his eyes on those possible relay combinations. It's going to be quite tough for the, the selectors to pick those relay squads. A lot of calculations done on the, the para relays. You've not only got to take in, well, for the medley relay, different strokes, but different classifications. The relays are 20 point relays. So you add up all the classification numbers of the swimmers, they've got to come to no more than 20 points. So there's a few permutations, shall we say. And they're mixed relays as well, which adds to the mix. Linda Longhorn though, can he get close? to his lifetime best, his British record. The crowd really got behind Lyndon and Harvey Phillips the other night in that very close race. And it's been a great crowd here in the Aquatic Centre. And we really hope that they get behind Lyndon here as he comes down towards the halfway mark. Lyndon is keeping that stroke rate going. Let's hope he can pick this one up as he comes in. 25 seconds or so at halfway. His British record is only 50.12, so if he's got something left in the tank, Lyndon, this is the time to use it. Here he comes. He's in the S4 classification. He's affected in all four limbs. He's been a great servant to the GB squad over the years. Tokyo Paralympian, of course, his Paralympic debut in Japan, hoping to make another one. He's going to be just outside his own British record in 54.44, but big cheers from the crowd for Lyndon Longhorn. And that is the end of his programme for this week. It's been a busy week for Lyndon. He's had some great performances and uh, those tussles that he's had with Harvey Phillips, the younger swimmer with very similar impairment, have been a real feature of the classification, the multi-class swimming this week. It's been absolutely excellent. Well, Lyndon, of course, doesn't get off the, the wall too quickly. Of course, due to his impairment, once he's up into his strokes, really kept that stroke rate going in the second half here. And Lyndon 
into the wall, keeping that stroke going. And important to finish on his good arm or his better arm. Quite often you see the para swimmers with the arm impairments finish on the wrong arm and that costs them half a second or so. Linden, absolutely perfect finish there. 54.44, 426 points. He will be the champion in this 50 metres backstroke in this para Paris final. No 50 backstroke for the Olympians, but there is a 50 backstroke in the Paralympics for Linden's classification. Well, great to see uh, Lyndon winning that uh, 50 metres backstroke. And uh, over to John. Have a chat with him. Uh, yeah, I'm down here with Lyndon. Congratulations. British title there. You know, I know you swim in the 200 later as well. You've had a massive programme this week, Lyndon. How's the body handling it? The body's fine. It's keep on going. You've just got to stay positive and keep your mindset in the right place. And you've just got to keep, keep telling yourself one more swim. One more swim. That's all it is. But... Body keeps fighting, you keep recovering, you go again. That's what you've got to keep doing, repeat the process. Stay consistent and you keep going. Yeah, I love that, I love that. A, a great piece of advice for a lot of people out there. And you know, uh, you swam seven events in Tokyo. We've got the Paris Olympic Games coming up over the summer. Looking to try and uh, hit that amount of events again? Maybe more, maybe less? Don't know, we'll see what happens. But hey, it wouldn't be possible without my coach, Paul Woodley. So he's been a massive help to get me to this position with two months worth of training. So. One more to go, bring on the 200 free. Bring it on, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lyndon Longhorn. Well done, mate, well, good luck tonight. Yeah, Lyndon Longhorn winning the gold in the uh, para men's 50 meters backstroke final. And we've got a very special presenter of the medals. Here he is, he's my co-commentator, myself and Molly Renshaw. It is the wonderful, the great looking Paul Noble, himself five-time Paralympian. 15 Olympic medals, 15 Paralympic medals he's got, Paul Noble. And there, the champion on the 50 metres backstroke, it is Lyndon Longhorn. What a, what a programme. I've got to say, what, a, what an amazing uh, mindset, incredible mindset. The only way if you're going to deliver such a massive programme. Well done, sir. Very, very impressive. Well, straight up into the next race, there's the, uh, the ready room, as you say, the call room, ready for the next race, which is the junior men's 200 metres backstroke. And the fastest seed is Oscar Dodds, a 17-year-old. He's not yet done a uh, European junior consideration time. He can do it on this, but he's going to have to do a lifetime best to do so. He was the fastest junior after the heats, eighth in the junior final of the uh, 100 metres backstroke. And, uh, well, with so many... European junior consideration times. Great opportunity here to, for Oscar Dodds to uh, add one more to that list on this final day of swimming. Absolutely, and surprisingly in this event, we haven't actually seen anyone hit that European junior qualifying time of 2.02.88 yet. So I think that's quite rare. I think we've had some really fast heats from, from the juniors so far. So this is an open field. Um, I think it'll take a few PBs from everybody as we don't have any juniors in the following heats. So. All juniors focus on this on this event. Yeah, you're right, Molly. This uh, it's very unusual not to have some juniors in the uh, in the B final and the A final. None in this one. So this is it. This is the junior final. It's almost like a straight junior final. Not happened too many times at these championships. The juniors have really stepped up wonderfully well here. The junior final, the men's 200 metres backstroke. Oscar Dodds, the fastest seed in four. So he set a lifetime best to qualify for this final. He went 203.8, swam very well. Second uh, fastest seed is Fergus Thompson of Mount Kelly. He's also not done a European junior consideration time yet. His lifetime best, just a tenth faster than that of Oscar Dodds. So it's going to be interesting to see how he goes. Eighth and sixth, respectively, in the junior final, the 100 backstroke. So. Let's see how they go down this uh, first 7,500 metres or so. Really good start there from, from lane three. He had really strong underwaters, really maximising that 15 metres. See again, he nearly got 10 metres there off the wall. He's coming up ahead of everybody. Yes, and another one, uh, Connor Cherrington, uh, closer to us in six. And Molly, the underwaters, I mean, it really has become, they call it the fifth, the, uh, the fifth stroke with fly back breast and free as the four, but they do call it the fifth. It makes such a difference. What kind of stuff do you do in training to make sure that you can do that full 15 metres underwater? Because it's an awful long way. 
Yeah, it is. And I remember when I when I trained with Dave in, in Loughborough, at the end of every session, we used to do X amount of 25s underwater fly kick, or myself and James would do butterflies. So there's a lot of focus around the hypoxic um, element, just because towards the end of a race, especially this last turn the boys are coming into, you know, they're, they're 150 meters deep, oxygen levels are getting fairly low. So having that practice in training is really good. And you're certainly puffing into this 150 meter turn on uh, on a two on the back. So let's watch this one, Molly, this uh, final turn. Great turn there from lane four, Oscar Dodds, turning of 130.3. Really good split there as well, splitting a 31 1. So interesting to see how fast he can come back and how close he can get to that European junior qualifying time. Well, it's, uh, it's a fantastic battle down this uh, final 15 metres or so between Oscar Dodds in four and six. It's Connor Cherrington in the white hat up there is Dean Fern come back very quickly as well. At the moment, Oscar Dodds is holding on. European junior consideration in a very fast 2.02.86. They're going to do it. Oh, my goodness me, he's smashed it. But his lifetime best was 2.03.8. He's just gone 2.017. Look at that. Well, I said he hasn't done a European junior consideration time yet. He's absolutely not one out of the park. Good lad. Oscar Dodds, Leicester Sharks. Well done. Yeah, amazing swim there. <laughs> Very happy. Nice to see some smiles. I feel like we haven't seen too many smiles this week, but great swim there from him. The top three all dipping under the qualifying time there. Big PBs, 2.01.72 for Oscar Dodds. Wow. 2017 for Oscar Dodds, 2021 from Dean Fern is good, and Connor Cherrington, 2023. All lifetime bests. Fabulous stuff. In fact, the top four were lifetime bests. That's what you've got to do. Come to the Olympic Trials. It's uh, Aquatics GB Swimming Championships, and it is a national championship, but it is the Olympic Trials for the able bodied and the para swimmers. And the junior selection meet for the uh, junior Europeans, which uh, happened in Vilnius in July. Here's the uh, B finalists waiting to come out, waiting to parade. Fantastic nerves in that in that ready room area, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a daunting place and we've touched on this briefly this week, but very interesting to see how different people um, handle the core room. So it's nice to kind of have those behind the scenes vid um, videos, just to see how people are coping. But I imagine that A final of the 200 freestyle, it'll be pretty tense in there later. You know what, I was talking to somebody earlier and apparently um, they, were, they were watching very carefully and normally they're having a little bit of a laugh and a joke and, you know, punch him on the arm and ha, ha, ha and all that kind of stuff. Apparently it was really, really serious in the morning heats. I mean, that just says everything about this final, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I bumped into Duncan yesterday and he was saying how everyone's going to have to be on top form in the heats just to kind of make it through to the final. So... Definitely a daunting place to be. I'm, I'm glad I'm not in there. I've, like I said, I'm a chatter, so not a place for me. Well, you're a chatter, but you're also a world short course champion, 200 meters brushstroke, so the chatting worked for you. I guess it's whatever you want, isn't it? Whatever works best for you, you do. Yeah, exactly, and I think people have like pre-race songs or they have routines or they have superstitions. It's, it's kind of just what you, you build up over the years and just comes natural to you before your race. So the B final of the men's 200 metres backstroke. Can you see uh, there's little black ribbons? There you go, um, tied to that little shelf there. So they put their feet on that little ledge to make sure that when the gun goes and they drive backwards, they don't slip take down the feet, don't slip down the wall. Very high take your marks position from lane five there. The red hat of Samuel Greenbank. His brother's in the big final uh, coming up next. But uh, Sam Greenbank in uh, five, very good start. Ex of the uh, fantastic Cockermouth Club up there in, uh, in Cumbria, as was his brother Luke, the Olympic bronze medalist on this two and a backstroke in, in the big final. Yeah, great starts there from both the both the middle lanes. Sebastian Somerset out from out in the USA, so the California Golden Bears, so making the trip over here for this Olympic trials. But great turn there from um, from Samuel Greenbank. Oh, no, sorry, that is Sebastian Somerset. But great turn there. I think we'll expect to see really strong turns from him. I think there's a big focus in America around NCAAs and swimming short course yards. So massive focus on the underwaters there. So I think we can really expect to see him excel there. So first to turn at the halfway mark of this B final, the men's 200 metres backstroke, and it is Somerset. His turns are something special. Look at that, see how far he goes. Wow, 
Well, he went about 12 and a half, 13 metres, that uh, white hat in the centre. I know he's a little bit disappointed not to make the big final, but training over at uh, University of California, Berkeley, uh, up in San Francisco, beautiful, beautiful place. It gets a little bit chilly in the winter time, I've got to tell you, but it's uh, absolutely wonderful place. Let's watch this turn again, see how many kicks he does underwater. He's absolutely sensational at these turns, watch it. Yeah, really strong turns, and like I said, such a focus out there on the short course yard season, so amazing last turn there as well, especially under kind of oxygen deprivation. So, yeah, big focus out there on the turns for the short course yards. It's really big for the NCAA, so you can see that showing here. Well, he went nine kicks underwater, and it really works for him. And look at this, he must be about three, three and a half metres ahead of the rest of the field. There's Sebastian Somerset, sir. Adam Graham of Millfield School in three going well, maybe in second place at the moment in this B final, but Sebastian Somerset's going to win it. Is he going to go into two minutes? He does. Wow. 159-3. Well, that would have comfortably got him into the uh, in the big final, the A final. Well, I think he was probably a little bit disappointed, probably didn't quite pace that uh, heat so well. He had that nose clip on just so he can control his breath coming out underwater when you're on your back and you're going so far, 12 and a half, 13 metres underwater, you get water up your nose. No, it stings, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely helps. I think the last thing you want to be thinking about is that during, during an Olympic trials final. So, but yeah, great swim there from him. First time under two minutes and just a second off his PB. So the B final of the men's 200 backstroke won by Sebastian Somerset. A very good time indeed. That, that will probably place in the big final. 159-3, Graham second, Riley third. Well, John Mason caught up with uh, Luke Greenbank, the fastest seed for the final this evening, after his heat this morning. I'm down here with Luke Greenbank. Luke, fastest qualifier in that two back by nearly a second and a half. You are close to that nomination time, but that looked like a really comfortable swim for you. Yeah, um, the, uh, the aim this morning was just to kind of blow off the cobwebs. Um, had a few days off, so yeah, that was really good. Um, Definitely more in there tonight, and yeah, looking forward to it. I mean, it's a tough one for you as well, because this is your main event. It's the last day. It's a long way sort of watching everyone else go. Does that sort of uh, have a bit of a mental toll? Um, yeah, but I think you've got to kind of take it as it comes, really. Um, see it as an advantage if you can deal with it. Then it puts you in a good stead. Like, when you go to the major competitions, could be waiting around for, like, possibly eight days. So you've got to kind of deal with it, and um, yeah. Just kind of make the best of it. Well, look, good luck tonight. Go be amazing. It's going to be a great race. Yeah, thank you. Well, it is going to be a cracking race. And uh, really interesting for me is Johnny Marshall in three and four, Luke Greenbank, five, Ollie Morgan, six, Brody Williams. And, well, there's four of them, Molly. Not four slots, is there? I'd honestly say there's like, potential for four, more than four of them to go faster as well. Um, but yeah, only two slots available, so top two swimmers. First place, if they get the qualifying time, they will automatically be going on the plane. The second place will be a discretionary pick. Well, there's uh, two, of the, two of the middle guys have made it. There's Sir Cam Brooker. His lifetime best is 157.9. Well, that's only just outside of the uh, nomination time. He's in lane one. So if he goes under his lifetime best, he's got a chance, you know. Jack Sherry's in eight with Matt Ward in seven. And uh, Matt Ward's quick too, so interesting to see how he goes here. Charlie Brown goes in lane two, part of that uh, fantastic squad that uh, Dave Hemmings and Molly Renshaw used to swim in. He's a good coach, isn't he? Fantastic. And lane, lane six walking out now, Brody Williams. He has a really fast PB as well, Commonwealth champion in Birmingham, so definitely don't discount him here. He's not yet on the uh, train, though. He's not booked his slot yet. This gentleman has, Jonathan Marshall, well, he's not actually booked it in theory, but he went underneath the uh, nomination time and came second. So he will be nominated, but can't believe he's not going to get uh, picked for that. Very quick on the 153-0, a great swim from him on that. Now, Ollie Morgan, well, what a swim he's had already at these championships. 52-7-0 broke Liam Tancock's British record on the 100 metres backstroke that was set back in 2009. Ollie Morgan. He's on the train. He's going to Paris. But someone who hasn't quite made it yet, goodness me, day six in the evening, and he's still not booked his ticket. I think he will. He's a fabulous guy, lovely guy, and a brilliant swimmer, Olympic bronze medalist, Luke Greenbank. Is he going to do it? 
I think he will, yeah. He's very experienced. Olympic bronze medal in this event. So definitely got something to prove. Has the fastest PB in the field and was just shy of that nomination time this morning. So hopefully that's filled him with confidence. He had a really strong 100 earlier this week. So hopefully he can bounce back from that and have something to prove here. Well, he's very quick indeed. Here's uh, Jonathan Marshall in lane number three, I think that is. So with the... With the Florida Gators hat, trains over there in America. There he is, Luke Greenbank, in lane four, Olympic bronze medalist, coached by Mel Marshall, of course, and that's uh, Adam Peaty, Mel Marshall, Luke Greenbank, Anna Hopkin. What a group they've got there. Oh, dear, I'll tell you what, my nerves are going nuts here. I so hope Luke swims well. I so hope the fastest two guys by, by rights go through, whoever they are, swim well and go through, please. So hard to pick which two of these eight are going to come one and two, and will they go under 157.28? Take your marks. The big final, the Paris final of the men's 200 meters backstroke. The consideration time is 157.28, and Luke Greenbank. Well, on his lifetime best, he can do it, but this is a massive pressure environment and a really good start from Johnny Marshall up there in three. My goodness me, that blue hat, very quick. Yeah, very good underwater, sir. Johnny again trains out in, in Florida, so I think we can expect to see him really good on the underwaters. Really good swims at NCAAs a few weeks ago, and I think he placed fourth in the 200 backstroke out there, so I think we can expect to see big things from him. His turns again are brilliant. They really are. Johnny Marshall's turns are outstanding. So Marshall in three. Greenbank's well placed. His second half is very good. The Black Hat's just one lane closer to us from that leader. So Jonathan Marshall leading. Second is uh, is Luke Greenbank. And uh, these two guys going to go over first and second. It looks like maybe Charlie Brown's going well as well. Look at that. Marshall, Brown, Greenbank, Brooker. Yeah, great turn there from Charlie. He, um, he actually recently left Dave Hemmings' group to join Mel Marshall. So he trains alongside Luke Greenbank. So I'm sure he's had great prep coming into this. But I think we can expect to see Luke really pushing back here now. This is where he really starts to excel down these last two lengths. Well, let's hope these guys really bring it home quickly. The, uh, the consideration time, 157.2, is quick. But first over is Jonathan Marshall, second on the 100 metres backstroke, and he looks very good. His underwaters are outstanding. Look at that turn from Luke Greenbank, though, even better than Marshall. Wow. Amazing last turn from Luke, and I think that just shows his skill and experience. He's really kept his head cool down that first 100, and now he's pulling away from the rest of the field. Wow, this is really impressive. Nice high head position, coming back quickly is uh, Ollie Morgan, you know. Ollie Morgan's coming back very fast and the wheel's falling off a little bit from Greenbank in four. This is going to be very tight finish. Morgan in the red hat, is he going to get it? Oh, so close, Morgan gets it. And they both go under the consideration time. Well, that is fantastic news for both Ollie Morgan and Luke Greenbank, and that's just what I hoped. Two great swims underneath the consideration time, and I can't believe that both of those guys aren't going to go. Ollie Morgan's already going for that 100 metres, and I can't believe they're not going to select Luke Greenbank for that. Oh, that's brilliant news. Absolutely wonderful. What a last 50 from Ollie Morgan as well. I think I thought I'd expect to see him go out a little bit faster after that. That amazing speed in the 100, but he kept it very calm and controlled and literally took over at the very last minute. But he's late to swimming, this guy, uh, Ollie Morgan. Normally, Somebody who's late to swimming hasn't quite got that real depth of uh, stamina, but he came back so quickly. He did, and he is only 20 years old, so I'm sure he's still got a very bright future ahead of him. But, yeah, he kind of he kind of wasn't even really in the picture for the first 100. I think we were so focused on Johnny, Johnny and Luke, and, yeah, amazing last 50 from him. Well, that was extraordinary, wasn't it? And Luke went early on that final 50. I mean, I think it's the right way for him to go. He was careful and considered down the first 100, and it was right. It was in his right zone, right here now. He started to really move, and at uh, 25 metres, you can can't even see Morgan in the picture yet, the red hat. Wow! <laughs> Very impressive, and it was so close as well, but <laughs> nice to see some smiles. I think tonight we're going to see a lot of big smiles, so great swim from the boys there. Fantastic stuff. So the result of the men's 200 metres backstroke. What a swim from Ollie Morgan and does the double again. He did the 50, 100, 200 last year. 
and the 100 and 200 here, that's all there is. Ollie Morgan going to Paris, and I think Luke Gringouts is going to be joining him. Well, he's done it again, ladies and gentlemen. Get it for Oliver Morgan. <laughs> so, Oliver, the 200, obviously a very different race. You know, that really came down to the touch between you and Luke. That, that final 15, your foot was pedaled to the medal. What was going through your minds at the end of a long 200? Um, just holding on, you know, just powering through. And it's kind of what happened last year. And it's kind of happened again. So, no, the last 50 was felt really strong. So, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, it was an amazing thing to do. And you also hit that time again. So I want to say congratulations. You're already on that plane to Paris, but just got yourself another event. Ladies and gentlemen, it's off to the Olympics. <laughs> congratulations, mate. Thank Congrats. You. Congrats. And Luke, uh, listen, that was an amazing race. You hit that nomination time, was super fast, and really came down to the touch. Yeah. So talk us through it. Um, yeah, first of all, hats off to Ollie. That was an amazing last 50. Really world class. Um, and it's great to kind of see how this event's moved on um, over the past few years. But yeah, congrats to him. Really close one. But um, yeah, hopefully um, put my name in the mix. So yeah, yeah. just got to wait. Wait till next week to hear. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it was an amazing performance, mate, and you have to wait to the end, like day six, we were catching up this morning, that sort of playing at all of the last day being your event. Are you able to keep cool here? Is that where experience comes into it, just knowing that this is where it's got to be done? Yeah, I mean, like, I have a race plan, and I, I stuck to it there, I think. Um, probably a few things to tweak, but, you know, it's a good race. It's the fastest I've been this season, so can't complain. We love it. Look, congratulations, mate. A silver medal and that nomination time. We love to see it. Now, Brody, mate, I, I know that there are highs and lows of, of uh, elite sport, of course, so just tell me what's going through your mind. Uh, yeah, a little bit disappointed not to get the time, uh, well, not to come top two, but, you know, I'm up against the 100 British record holder and the 200 British record holder, so, you know, it's pretty tough competition, but, yeah, I'm just happy that, you know, my family's here to watch it and, yeah, just enjoyed it. Yeah, and he did amazing, didn't he? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists! Well, Ollie, uh, excuse me, Brody Williams there. We should say he was underneath the Olympic uh, nomination time. It was a very, very good swim indeed from him. And the uh, medals being presented by uh, Katie Shortman and uh, Izzy Thorpe from the Aquatics GB artistic swimming uh, team. And I've got to tell you, those two women are utterly brilliant at the, uh, at the recent World Championships. Absolutely extraordinary. Medals out of nowhere. I think it's still an unfunded program, the uh, artistic uh, swimming, otherwise known as synchronized swimming. But they were absolutely brilliant, the two of them. Future's very bright. And future's really bright for those three guys. All three underneath the Olympic uh, nomination time. And he did say, Molly, at the start of that race that uh, three of them could go under the time. And it was just which two touched the wall first. Yeah, really tough there for Brody as well. He he had a great summer um, at the Commonwealth Games, picking up gold there. So definitely within his reach. But like you said, he's up against such a tough crowd. He has the British record holder on the 100, British record holder on the 200, Olympic medalist. So really tough field out there. And unfortunately, only the top two can go. Well, there's uh, Luke Greenbank uh, leading them out. Right in the centre, Ollie Morgan. And then Brody Williams just on the left-hand side, just behind those... Uh, black shorts <laughs> on the left hand side there he is but uh, right in the centre well what a 12 months Ollie Morgan's had at the last uh, British Championships when they swam a 50 he had a clean sweep 50, 100, 200 this year they've only got 100 and 200 because 50 backstroke not an Olympic event it is in the Worlds and the Commies but not in the Olympics so he's 100% 5 for 5 yeah very impressive stuff and I think his confidence just build him with every swim and I think going into the summer, he's in such a good position. But moving on here, we're on to the women's 100 breaststroke. Very exciting event. First up with the junior final. Well, I've got to tell you, this is, uh, this is going to be interesting, this race. The British record, I think, in the big final may well be in danger. It's held by a very, very quick swimmer. She gave up a couple of years ago. But she'll be watching this uh, very, very carefully, sitting next to me. Molly Renshaw. Take your marks. This is the uh, junior final of the uh, women's 100 metres breaststroke. 
And uh, right in the centre, Mabley Collier of Repton Swimming Club. Did a European Junior consideration time on the uh, 200 breaststroke. She's just 15 years of age right in the centre. And look at that orange hat of Jasmine Carter of Basildon. Her sister's also swimming here at this championship. Swim very well indeed. She's in three and going out quickly. Yeah, great start there from actually fast start from this side of the pool. So not typically following that spearhead um, arrangement in this final, but turning first is lane six, Anna in a 33.09. So very fast out there for um, for the 17-year-old from Wigan. Look at the stroke of Anna here. It's really interesting. It's a blue hat three from the bottom there with the, the white lettering. Slightly different kind of stroke to the rest of the field. Yeah, it doesn't kind of close at the front of the stroke and also has a very still head position. So a lot of swimmers, you can see them kind of diving in between the strokes, but staying very flat on the surface, which is great for that sprint breaststroke. Well, Jasmine Carter in that orange hat going really well in the second 50. The hand's coming uh, way over the surface of the water when she recovers. Really quick porpoising style stroke, and it's so effective. One ten six, Jasmine Carter. Well, exactly on her lifetime best to 1 100, 110.60. Yeah, very well timed from her. Great last 50 as well. She returned on the last 50 in 36.9, so fastest in the field on the way home by a long way. So, confirmation of the result then, here it is. A beef, a junior final, I should say, the women's 100 meters breaststroke. Jasmine Carter wins it from Basildon with uh, Mabley Collier in second. Jasmine Kuna of Mount Kelly in third. Well, Jasmine Nakuna, her lifetime best was 113. She skipped the 112s this morning, went to one, straight to uh, 111, just did a 112, so she's stuck one in there now. She's got the full set. This is the B final of the women's 100 meters breaststroke, and this will be interesting. There's some quick women in here, there really is. Fastest seed in four is the junior, the 15-year-old, Theodora Taylor from Torvine. And in three, Gillian Davy of Loughborough. Her dad, an Olympian, I swam with him. Super guy, John. And uh, she's been training out in uh, Indiana with Lily King, the world record holder on the 100 breaststroke. I know, what an honor. And maybe a little surprise to see her here in the B final. She does have a PB of 69.9. So she won the 200 breaststroke last year at British Champs and got a bronze earlier this week. So interesting to see how she's going to do here, but I imagine a very strong last 50. It's just two lengths. It's the 100 metres breaststroke, women's B final. Take your marks. So the B final of the women's 100 metres breaststroke, Theodora Taylor, the 15-year-old, is the fastest seed with uh, Stoymanova of uh, Swansea in five, and Gillian Davy up there in three, and that's her white hat. Great start there from um, lane six as well, Mia. She had a great underwater, looking really strong, really smooth stroke actually. Getting a nice tight recovery on the front of her stroke, finishing off the kick strong. So just coming into the turn, the one and only turn. Turns on breaststroke changed a little bit. Uh, Molly, you're only allowed to do one kick, but they seem to do it quite early in that, uh, in that uh, underwater phase. Yeah, so just one butterfly kick allowed on the underwater. So really trying to maximise the most out of that. It's been as tight and streamlined as you can through that process. But Gillian Davy looking great here, coming down the last 50. She was first to the first 50, so expecting to see a really strong last, last section of the race. Well, she's swimming very well here, isn't she? This, uh, this final uh, 25 metres, Gillian Davy, the 200 metres bronze medalist. She's a great... Uh, 200 metres breaststroke, 109.97 is a lifetime best, she's going to go a PB, well done. Well, Gillian Davy, she's uh, actually coming back from injury, so that's a great swim from her. Had a quick chat with her at breakfast this morning, she was in the hotel. A little bit of toast, a little bit of scrambled eggs, and uh, well, that certainly works for her, doesn't it? She's just done a lifetime best by six tenths of a second to go 69.3 with a lifetime best of 69.9. Great second 50. Yeah, great second 50. I think we kind of maybe expected that due to her 200 endurance, but yep, lane three, Gillian finishing of 109.35. So a great B final well this morning after the uh, women's power heats of the 100 metres breaststroke. John Mason spoke to Grace Harvey. 
She's Paralympic medalist, world champion, Commonwealth medalist, European medalist, every medalist in this event. Uh, and she's feeling a lot of pressure this morning, but Grace, you hit the time. That was a great swim. I know the nerves were there, but you got in there and did the job. Yeah, definitely. I felt so nervous going into that race, but it came down to, this is just two-lance brushstroke. You know, it was all about the process, just setting the stroke up, and I'm so happy that it paid off with under the qualifying time and a season's best. Yeah, it was an amazing swim for this morning, obviously looking at moving that on tonight, just trusting that process. Yeah, definitely. I want to look at the race report and see what areas I can tweak. I thought the start was really good, but a lot of time working on that dive. Um, but I feel like I've got a little bit more in the back end, so I kind of want to see if I can deliver that tonight. I mean, it's the end of a long week. You've had a big program. Uh, how's the body feeling? Last day. I'm a little bit tired, but I'm trying not to think about it. I feel like, you know, when you're in the middle of that competition, you are going to be tired. It's about focusing on the things that you can control, like eating right, getting some sleep in, and then just coming out tonight, feeling the crowd, because it's been such a great crowd at every heat and final session, hoping I can thrive off that to deliver another good performance. Well, I hope you can as well. Look, good luck tonight. Go smash it. <laughs> Well, here comes Grace out, waving to the crowd. She loves these big events. Grace Harvey, and she's been very successful. She was in the very first race of these championships alongside this young lady, still 12 years of age, Iona Winifred. And there, right next to Grace Harvey, will be Maisie Summers-Newton, the Paralympic champion in this 100 breaststroke. Achieved the nomination time yesterday. Brock Whiston in the SB8 class has been achieving nomination times all week. What a week she's had, Brock Whiston. Surely she'll be on her way to her first Paralympic Games. Tiana Oxby, lifetime best in qualification. She swims in the SB14 class, as does Poppy Maskell. Another swimmer who's had a very good week, Poppy. And the two fastest in the centre, both achieved qualification. Standards, nomination times in the Keats. Rebecca Redfern, the world champion in this SB13 visually impaired class, 100 breaststroke, and Louise for this. Well, both Rebecca and Louise are world champions when the world championship was held right here in London in 2019. So they've got good memories of this pool. Louise for this in the SB14 classification, Rebecca Redfern in the SB13 class. Number one to 10, those with physical impairments, 11 to 13, those with visual impairments, and 14, those with intellectual impairments. So Grace Harvey achieved her qualification standard in the heat. She swims in the SB5 class, Maisie Summers-Newton in the SB6. And watch out for Iona Winifred, the youngster, She's the British record holder in the SB7 class and has a chance Take of maybe marks. achieving the nomination standard of 134.85. So a number of swimmers have made the qualification standard, the nomination times. Iona Winifred hasn't in that yellow cap right at the top. She will be some way behind the leading swimmers, but she is in the lower numerical class. And again, it's all about the points, the, the times for these swimmers compared against the world best time in the last two years for their classification. And if you hit that time, you get a thousand points. And it's the higher number of points that will win this title. Well, very good start from Louise Finnish. She's had a great week, Louise Finnish. Nomination time set early in the week in the 200 freestyle. And she has achieved that other time in the heats today. So fantastic. Swimming this week for Louise Fidesz, a real resurgence in form over the last year or so, and looked like she's set for another Paralympic Games. He's been pressed by Rebecca Redfern. This is very much a specialist event for Rebecca, a great record in the major championships, Rebecca Redfern, and they are going head to head. Rebecca is the British record holder in 113.81. She'd love to get close to Louise as the leading two come into the finish. Rebecca coming back very strongly. And again, nomination times achieved. Well, let's turn our attention to the outside lanes as Brock Whiston also achieves a nomination time. Let's see if Iona Winifred can dip under that 134.85 at the top there. And it is 131.58, and that is a nomination time for the 12-year-old Iona Winifred. And that was superb. And look at the points total there. 
just tied with Brock Whiston. 995 points, Macy Summers Newton. A fantastic time for Macy. 131.93. 980 points and she's only third. The bronze medal position for the Paralympic champion. She can hardly believe it. But what about this young lady? She was in the very first race of the entire championships, Iona Winifred. She's had to wait to the very last day for her big event. She has just smashed it, smashed it. 131.58. 134.41 was a British record. And she has absolutely destroyed that one. It was a great battle at the front. Louise Fittis and Rebecca Redfern going head to head in the 900 point range for Rebecca Redfern. Louise Fittis just outside that 900 point range. But Brock Whiston, 995 points. Well, she thought she must have had that sewn up. But there are the two winners. Iona Winifred. What a swim from the youngster. 12 years of age, she's 13 next week. Brock Whiston, what a great week she's had. She can be delighted with that. And <laughs> the Maisie Summers-Newton, bronze medal for the Paralympic champion, 980 points. Remember, 1,000 points is the top point scorer for the, the top time in the world over the last two years. Maisie Summers-Newton, 131.93. That is not a bad time at all. Just half a second outside our best. Brock Whiston in second. And, well, what a fantastic race that was. All these nomination times, and the medalists are now with John. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our first joint gold medal of the week. Can I get a round of applause for our medalists? <laughs> Keeping us on our toes. Uh, Brock, I know you have had a big win. You've had uh, a, a big week, uh, a few wins here. I know you're racing again later. Um, this has been an amazing week for you, especially that 400, adding that to your program. Lots of surprises for you. Um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed with that one, I must admit, but it's the end of a week. Um, PB'd in the 400, PB'd in the 100 fly, so I can't be too disappointed, but... Yeah, I know it's a, you shouldn't complain if you win gold, but yeah, but me and my coach have had a long journey. We have a slightly different setup, so, yeah, yeah. but we're looking forward. He said it's 21 weeks till my first race, hopefully in Paris, so yes. he's ready for it. Well, <laughs> so, look, you, so are you. I think you're going to have an amazing summer. Congratulations on the gold medal. Uh, and Iona. I'm going to come in here because you were so shocked with that. 13 years old, you looked up, you're like, what was my time? What are you thinking? Uh, well, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting more of 133, but yeah. I was, like, so surprised with that. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. As you should be. You know what? Congratulations. A gold medal. A British champion. Yes. Amazing. Uh, you know, it's amazing. Oh, I love watching you race. I know you just seem so chill out there after getting that IM done yesterday, yeah. coming in here. That must have felt good, felt good to hit that nomination time as well. Yeah, really good. Um, 100 breaststroke is my absolute favorite race to kind of compete in. So, yeah, really good. And to hit a 131 right on PB is really, I'm really pleased with that. So, yeah, I think we've got a lot more to come in the 100 breast. But Iona there absolutely smashed it. Like, she's only 12 and she's become <laughs> British champion. Like, absolutely insane. So, yeah, it was amazing to race against her, so, yeah. I think big things to come from you, Iona. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. Oh, absolutely superb. Six nomination times achieved in that women's 100 breast. And there's Molly Renshaw. Still the British record holder in the women's 100 breaststroke. For a short time, at least. Maisie Summers Newton, what a fantastic champion she has been. And there are the joint champions, Iona Winifred. Well, a star in the making. Not 13 until next week. Absolutely amazing performance. And some great performances as well this week by Brock. She can be delighted with what she has done in these championships. Well, nomination times achieved selection later on this week it would not be a huge shock to see all three of them 
on the train to Paris later this year. Well, here we go. This is a big one. It really is. It's the women's 100 metres breaststroke final. The fastest seed is uh, Angred Evans of University of Stirling. Just missed the British record in the heats this morning by six one hundredths of a second. She missed that uh, British record. And Cara Hannum, well, her lifetime best is only three tenths of a second outside that uh, British record. So it's going to be very, very interesting indeed how this unfolds. It really is. So uh, Angred Evans is fastest seed in lane four. In five, it's Cara Hanlon with Sienna Robinson in six. And Imogen Clark, the British record holder on the 50 metres breaststroke in lane three. Goodness me, I mean, this, is gonna, this race is going to unfold in a fascinating manner, isn't it, Molly? It is, yeah. And, you know, we have Imogen and Angred in lanes three and four. I think they're going to take it out really strong. But we have the British champion in the 200 in lane five of Cara Hanlon. So... Definitely going to be a strong finish from her. So I'm, I'm excited, you know. It's, it's, I'm obviously nervous about my record. I would love to hang on to it for <laughs> as long as possible, but I do think it's going to get broken in this race. Well, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. There is, I guess there's two ways to look at it. One, they need to go quick because the consideration time, the uh, nomination time for the Olympics is 66.31. Your British record is 66.21. And bizarrely, one tenth between those two, Angred Evans split it in the heats this morning. So she didn't quite make it. She's got to go a little bit quicker. And of course, uh, so has Cara Hanlon, if uh, either of them are going to break your British record. But well, it certainly could go. We'll watch, uh, we'll watch the times. The split that Angred Evans went this morning was, uh, was pretty quick, Molly. So we'll just watch for that. Yeah, she split this morning in a 30.82. And... I think Imogen will be up there with her at 50. She holds the British record on the 50 at 30.02. So I think we can expect a very strong start from lane three and four. So Imogen, there she is, Imogen Clark in three. The British record holder on the 50 breaststroke. Angrid Evans, not yet. The British record holder on the 100, because she's sitting next to me. Cara Hanlon in five. Could she break the British record? Take your Final of the women's 100 breast. So Clark in threes, very quick to 50. Angrid Evans in four. In five, it's Cara Hanlon. Sienna Robinson's not slow in six either. This is going to be fascinating. Look at the start of Image and Clark in three. Yeah, great start from Image in three, but also Sienna Robinson in lane six had a really strong underwater phase. Well, going out as we expected is uh, Image and Clark, but Angrid Evans is going with her in four. This is very interesting. So. Angrid Evans better on the second half. My goodness me, she's flying. She's ahead of Clark. 30.82 was the split this morning. Oh, very close. Almost identical. 30.83 down that first 50. So going to have to come home slightly faster than she did this morning. But I think a 65 could definitely be on the cards here. Well, she only needs to come back one-tenth of a second quicker to break the British record. She's on here. The time she really wants, though, is 66.31. That's the consideration time for the Olympics. Coming back very hard, though, is Cara Hanlon closer to us. She's really driving for the wall here. She's got about 10 metres to go, and Angrid Evans just about holding on, but Cara Hanlon coming back. Evans and Hanlon. Evans and Hanlon. Who's it going to be? It is... Oh, my goodness me. It is Angrid Evans, 66.54 with uh, Cara Hanlon's second, 66-6-0. Six one-hundredths of a second splitting the first and second swimmers. Goodness me. And Molly Renshaw, your wish has come true. It's going to be another year at least, I guess. Well, maybe a couple of months, maybe, for your British record to stand. But they've just missed out on that nomination time. Now, they can be considered for the Olympic team, or they'll be put on the Olympic team, if the results, the, cu the cumulative time of the back, the breast, the fly, and the free winners all go under a time that Great Britain Swimming have uh, set for the medley relay. So she can qualify for that. So it still may well be there, and then maybe she'll just be taken anywhere for the relay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she put in a really strong swim this morning. She dipped under that nomination time. So... Although they can't be selected off the heats, there's another great performance there from her. You know, the 66 territory is fairly new to her this year. So handling the nerves, coming out here and really close finish there between her and Cara. But in a great position, finishing first, club very close to a PB, puts the great position for the relay. Certainly is. Angrid Evans is her wins her first national championship title from University of Stirling, 66-5-4. Six one-hundreds back is Cara Hanlon in silver with Imogen Clark, the bronze. 
What a race that was, gracious me. Well, let's hear what the uh, medalists have got to say with John Mason. Well, I tell you what, Angarad, uh, you know how to put on a race and put on a show. I know you're going to be a little bit disappointed there hitting that time this morning. You obviously were hoping to go a little bit faster in that, but British champion. Yeah, no happy with that still. Um, one of my fastest homes I've been, but it's going to be a bit of a kick in the teeth having gone the time before and when it actually matters, not going it, but still a good swim, so I'll take it. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, you and Cara, obviously, University of Stirling, she was right there sort of chasing you down. Could you feel her on your shoulder? Uh, yeah, no, I could see the splash. Um, I felt the pressure, but uh, it's always good racing Cara. I feel like we push each other on, so very happy for the both of us. University of Stirling, Cara, you're at Edinburgh, of course. Uh, you've had some great races this week, um, putting in another good time. I know that was your goal, to come here, put in solid times in front of the selectors. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was an amazing race with Angard there. We knew it was going to be tough coming in tonight. And I just want to thank Matt, my coach, and everyone at Edinburgh. Yeah. And of course, my family as well who are here tonight. So, yeah, I couldn't do it without them. Yeah, and they've been some of the loudest fans in all week. We love to see it. Look, congratulations, another silver medal and a great time. Imogen, it's great to see you. Um, obviously, you know, we see you do the 50, we see you do the 100. 50's not at the Olympics, so this was it. This was a charge for you. Yeah, definitely. It's been an odd block of training leading up to doing, you know, double the 50, but I just wanted to go tonight and have a bit of a dog fight towards the end. And so do... <laughs> <laughs> Loud as well, we've got loud fans. You know, uh, the 50 is uh, obviously, this is like double the length, so it's a totally different way to train. Has that been an adjustment for you and what were your expectations sort of coming in? Yeah, it was a massive um, adjustment to training. My expectations were just to leave everything in the pool, leave with my head held high and I think I've done that. I think you have as well. Look, congratulations, a British bronze medal. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. So she showed she was right on a lifetime best in third there, Imogen Clark. But uh, what a race it was between Angred Evans and Cara Hanlon. Very quick. Well, medals being presented. <laughs> nice handshake there from Molly Renshaw. Her British record stands for the moment. The bronze to Imogen Clark, the silver there to uh, Cara Hanlon, Edinburgh University. And the gold, her first national title. Angred Evans of University of Stirling. Well, it's not going to be long, is it? It's, uh, it's definitely on the cards, this British record. It needs to go. We need to get uh, Warren down in the 65s, and then I'm sure it won't be long. Angrad Evans looks great. I could see her going 64, you know. She looks fabulous. Once she just gets used to these uh, big events and delivering her best self in the arena when she gets a chance, it's, uh, it's going to happen, I'm sure of it. Well, straight into the women's 100 metres freestyle, the junior final now. And uh, there's seven swimmers in this junior final. Haven't quite uh, got the eight swimmers. But uh, Phoebe Cooper is the fastest seed in lane number four. And what a meet she's had. Done the European junior consideration time in the 200 free, the 200 IM, the 100 free, the 400 free. Well, well, there's the... Uh, well, there's me, look. Hello. <laughs> They're right in front of me. Um, I was on telly. Um, they're right in front of me signing these uh, fantastic sort of, uh, what are they, cardboard sort of uh, medals. Giant medals they are. And uh, there's the Drew in the background just there. Just, uh, you can see just here, this, this chap. And uh, they're signing those giant medals. There's a gold one, a silver one, and a bronze one. And every single time the swimmers come out, they parade past us and stick the little squiggle on there. What a memento they will be. B final, 100 free. So Isabel Cooper, uh, Isabel Ocaro in three. The twin sister of Eva, who's in the big final uh, fairly shortly. Third fastest seed into this final with Phoebe Cooper in four. Holly Wilson, five. Annabelle Compton, six. Holly Widows from Mount Kelly in seven. I'll give you right at the top there is Shola, Shola Robinson of Sheffield and uh, Libby Broder of uh, Cardiff in two. And first of the turn. Well, it's very tight down this first 50, isn't it? Look at that, 26-7. Uh, Widow's closest to us. Well, actually, yeah, she's gone very quickly down the first 50. Can she hold on, Holly Widow's? Her lifetime best is 56.0. Uh, swam 57.2 in the heats this morning, but this is a better swim, certainly. See if she can bring it back uh, quickly closer to us in lane number seven and get close to her lifetime best. It's a good swim. Mount Kelly had a great meet here. She's swimming really well. This is an impressive 100 free, 
55-5. Wow. Well, that is an excellent swim, 55-5. And that, that would have been very close to getting her in the in the eighth one. Look at that. Look at, well, yes. That's what happens when you give it all the beans. Look at that. That would have got her in the big final. Gracious me. That's amazing. She's in the junior final. She was slowest into the junior final. That would have got her into the A final. Amazing swim. Yeah, amazing swim. You can see how happy she is with that as well. That's her, her fifth European junior qualifying time this year. Hollywood O is taking the win in a 55-5-1. Well, Phoebe Cooper was good as well, wasn't she? 55-8. First two under 56 in the junior final. Goodness me. Well, I can tell you what, that's, uh, Holly, Will Holly Willows, is, uh, Widows is definitely going to the European Juniors with that. 55-5. Wow. She's just walking past now. She's still got a massive smile on her face. That's great to see. The B final of the women's 100 metres freestyle. And her teammate Erin Little goes in lane six. Uh, but the fastest seed is another Mount Kelly teammate, Megan Barnes in four. What a night they're having. 55-5. Gracious, I still can't get over that. She would have made the A final. I know, very impressive stuff. And I think Mount Kelly having a great week. We've seen lots of their juniors hitting those qualifying times. So probably riding that wave of kind of emotion and success. And it's just, it seems to be rubbing up on everyone. It certainly is. Well, that's a Jemima Hall, the blue hat of Bath in three. Jana Spinner, also from Bath in seven. This is the B final of the women's 100 free. Megan Barnes, fastest seed from Mount Kelly in four, with Take Kate Clifton of Sheffield in five. So it's getting quicker and quicker in these uh, women's 100 metres freestyle. The big final's going to be absolutely lightning. Anna Hopkin, the fastest seed. She's the class of that field. Hard to see her beaten, but, uh, you know, stranger things have happened, but I, I, I honestly can't see it. But the interesting start here, very even down this first 30 metres. Yeah, very even. And junior Sky Carter in lane two looking great as well. 16 years old. We saw her sister compete earlier this night and won, she won her final. So really great, um, great family there from the swimming. But turning first there was Erin Little in 26.68. Well, she's got uh, the fastest lifetime best of this field of 55.4. She's just seen her teammate in the B final go 55.5. So I think she's going to want to set something special here. She's very tight indeed down this last 25 metres or so. Megan Barnes going well right in the centre in lane number four. I think she's going to set a lifetime best. This is really tight. What's she going to go? 55-5-0. Yep. 0.39 of a second lifetime best for Megan Barnes to win the B final of the women's 100 metres freestyle. Second, Kate Clifton of Sheffield. Third, Jemima Hall of uh, University of Bath. And uh, fourth was Rebecca Sutton from lane eight. Great swim from Megan, just 21 years old. That was a PB this morning hitting a 55-89. So dipping again under that. Um, yeah, very happy. She looked very happy at the end of the race. Seen a lot of smiles tonight, which is nice. It certainly is. Megan Barnes wins for Mount Kelly, the second race in a row that Mount Kelly students have won. She wins at a 55-5-0. One 100th ahead of her teammates from the previous one. Kate Clifton second, Jemima Hall third. So the next race up is the women's 100 metres freestyle for the para-athletes. Over to you, Paul. Yeah, Amber Haycock leads them out. The S10 swimmer from Northampton. What a great setup Northampton have for the para-swimmers. Number of swimmers achieving their nomination times. Tully Kearney, the first of two world record holders coming out to do this. 100 free, Paralympic champion from Tokyo in this event. Another one of the Northampton contingent is Scarlett Humphrey. She swims in the S11 class. She's wearing black tote goggles. Swimmers with no vision in the S11 class. And this Brock Whiston back again. It's been a quick turnaround for Brock. Well, it's, uh, two events tonight. Following closely on from that 100 breaststroke earlier. And here's Megan Willis. Well, what a good week she's had, 16 years of age. Same age as Amber Haycock, two lanes across. A Welsh swimmer in the Commonwealth Games. Can she make another improvement? And Alice Ty, the second of the world record holders. Big support. She's <laughs> looking up there. Alice Ty looking very relaxed. She's had a great week. 
Tony Shaw dipped under the nomination time in the 400 freestyle a couple of days ago. She goes in lane five and the fastest time, not the highest number of points, but the fastest time, Kellyanne Warrington, who dipped under that nomination time on 100 butterfly yesterday. The S10 swimmer, what can she do from the center lane? So Tony Shaw swims in the S9 class. Kellyanne Warrington in the S10 classification. Got to be looking at the, the world record holders in lanes one and three, though. Alice Tai holds a record in the S8 classification. Great memories of this pool, of course. And Tully Kearney, well, she had a huge points total in the qualification. He, remember, the points are based on the world's best time in the last two years for their particular classification. Tully was 1,162. Huge points total. Let's see if she can get close to that world record that she holds at 113.34 for the S5 class. Scarlett Humphrey, also a British record holder. And Tony Short in lane seven and five for their respective classification. So we'll keep an eye on all those times. Take your marks. Points, unless something spectacular happens, should be Tully Kearney's for the taking and possibly Alice Ty as well, the two world record holders. But Callie Ann Warrington, wow, she's a relative newcomer to para swimming. She had uh, excellent swims, 50 freestyle was really good and no surprise to see her go out really fast here. British record, very fast, uh, 101.28, and her nomination time for this one, 101.89. She's already got it in the 100 butterfly, but she's given herself a chance here. Callie Ann Warrington, 29.75. Tully Kearney out in 35.92. That's very fast. We'll keep an eye on her to see if she can come back under that world record time. But Callie Ann Warrington at the front of the field. Tony Shaw following her one lane down. Well, keep an eye on the clock, 101.89, the nomination time she has to achieve. It's going to be very fast, this one. Maybe just slipping by in the closing stages into the 102 range, 795 points. Alex Ty, look at that, 921 for Alice. Uh, Scarlett Humphrey touches in 111, and Tully Kearney on the top. There we go, 1,149 points. Well, the two biggest point scores of the entire week for Tully, just slightly shy of the time that she went in the heats this morning, 115.68 and 115.39. So Tully Kearney tops the world rankings in the last two years. And going in to these Paris Paralympics, well, it's going to be the one to beat in this 100 freestyle, that's for sure. As they got off the, the, the blocks there, Kelly and Warrington, Tony Shaw in the centre. They both achieved those nomination times. A number of swimmers in this one have achieved it in different events. Kelly and Warrington looks like she is a fine for the GB team. Royal Tunbridge Wells, Monson swimmer. It's been a while since a para swimmer from Royal Tunbridge Wells, Monson. Been in the team. Blacked out goggles have got to be checked, of course, for Scarlett Humphrey. I think we're okay. Yeah, all the results confirmed. And Tully Kearney confirmed as the gold medalist 1,149 points. Incredibly big points totals. Remember, 1,000 points equivalent to the world's best time in the last two years. So Tully, the one to beat in the S5 class. Alice Ty, well, she is back on form, 921 points. Again, amputation in 2022. She's had some time to come back, but she's at her very best and doing great times. Like 105 for Alice. I think that's probably a personal best, post-amputation personal best for Alice Ty. I think she'll be delighted with that one, 105.43. And Tony Shaw in third position, 104.66 for Tony. She's a British record holder at 103.00, so just about a second or so outside for Tony. 
but she will be on the podium. She was absolutely delighted to dip under the 400 freestyle nomination time by just two one hundredths of a second. Wow, but they all count. Great stuff from the power of swimmers. And with all the nomination times achieved by the, the top three, by Tully Kearney in this one and by Alice Ty and Tony Shaw in other events, again, they will be favourites certainly to be on that train to Paris. Alice Ty, of course, has a, a checkered history with the Paralympic Games. She was selected as a youngster for the Rio Games, ended up in the relay team, which took gold in the medley relay. Fantastic performance there from Alice in Rio. And she has, of course, missed out on Tokyo through injury, but she's back. And she's looking hot for Paris. Oh, nearly. Alice making her way to the medal podium to join John Mason and the other medalists. Well, uh, congratulations, Tali, coming down here. I'm just, we're just squeezing Alice in. I'm just coming to you first. Uh, you got the nomination time and another British title. You have had a cracking week. Yeah, it's not bad, considering I was actually can, thinking about not coming to draw. So, yeah, pretty, pretty happy with that. It's been an all right week. Uh, you know, you say you were considering not coming. What was it that sort of got you here then to say, yeah, I'm going to go there, I'm going to race, I'm going to do it? I think the biggest thing, obviously, I've been struggling. It's been a hard 18 months. My mental health took a massive um, hit. And I think at the minute, like, I've not really enjoyed racing or training. But I know that in a few months, like, when I feel better, that if I hadn't given it a go and try and get to Paris, that I'd really regret it. So I was like, I felt like I owed it to myself to give it my best shot and see if I could get to Paris. And obviously, it's paid off. Well, I tell you what has absolutely paid off. You have hit a bunch of nomination times. Ladies and gentlemen, wasn't that incredible? Tully Kearney and Alice, you yourself have had a stellar week as well. I know you were feeling pretty tired done here, but sort of first majors, first Paralympic trials post-amputation. Give us a recap and how you feel about it. A uh, recap. All the races 100 or under have been great. Uh, my 400 final was a bit of a car crash. Um, but the rest was smashing. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that time. Um, although the points didn't reflect it, it was a world best time um, over the last three years. So really pleased with that. Um, excited for, well, yeah, my next races. We'd love to see it. Look, I can't wait to see what you do over the Sunday. You're always amazing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Alice Ty. I was going to go around him and Tony. You're very happy to have your program done. We've seen some fantastic swims for you as well. You've put yourself in a great position in front of selectors. You've got a few days off now. It's all done. Yeah, I'm really happy to have been racing here. Um, it's been a great couple of days and to see so much fast swimming and obviously the 200 free is about to happen and I think everyone in here is just so excited to watch that race. Well, look, congratulations on a fantastic week. Another bronze medal for you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. Well, three stars of the GB Para team. I'm sure they're going to make it to Paris. And Martin Baker, Chief Commercial Officer for Channel 4, making these presentations. And Channel 4 have done such great work for the Paralympic Games. They first covered the Paralympic Games in London in 2012. They continue to do it Rio, Tokyo, and they will be there again in Paris. And, well, what a fantastic job Channel 4 do for Paralympic sport. It's Tony Shaw, Alice Ty, and Tully Kearney. These are your medalists for your women's 100 freestyle para Paris final. The 100 freestyle Paris final is now on its way. And John caught up with one of the main contenders in that one, Freya Anderson, this morning. Well, it's the first time we're seeing her in the pool, uh, and it's on the final day. But uh, Freya, your first uh, time diving in, coming back, glandular fever has been a thing for you. It's been a rough sort of come back into here. So. Talk me through what's going through your mind. How was that? Um, I was just nervous. I had no idea what to expect. Um, I've not done any sort of fast things in training. I can probably count on one hand how many sprints I've done in like the past four months. Um, so it's just kind of nice to come in. You know, it's a nice crowd. It's an amazing arena. Um, 
and just get that first swim out the way. Yeah, and 55.01 is still, you know, it's a good swim, third fastest qualifier into tonight, not knowing where you are or where you're going to be. Uh, is that a nice thing? You know, you're like, what will be, will be. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the thing I was more worried about this morning is how painful it would be. Um, I would say it lived up to the expectations, <laughs> but no, to get into that final amongst them girls is really good. Um, just fine if I can squeeze a bit more out tonight. It'd be yeah. nice. We'll put on a show for us. It's last night. Good luck, Thank okay? You. And well done. Thank you. Well, she'll be going in the big final fairly shortly, the uh, first final. Yeah, it's, uh, this is actually this one, isn't it? This is it. This is the big final. And uh, Freya Anderson is going to be going in lane number three. Uh, Freya Anderson from Bar Performance, third fastest seed coming into this final. Evie Davis is in lane number eight, a 19 year old. But what a field. This is Freya Colbert in lane one. Won the 200 freestyle. World champion 400 medley. She's in lane one. Lucy Hope, she's very quick. She's already on the team. As is Freya Colbert. She'll be in that 4 by 2 free relay. She's booked a spot for that. Abby Wood's already on the team. She booked a spot in that 4 by 2 free relay and also the individual 200 medley. So lanes one, two and seven. Already on the team. There's Isabella Hindley. And now Freya Anderson. What do you think Freya's going to be able to do here? Because she said 90% better when I was talking to her the other day. Is 90% good enough, do you think, here? I think she's going to surprise herself. You know, Freya's such a performer. Under pressure, she always delivers. So she knows she's got a job to do here. I think, although British women do have the discretionary picks. So even if she doesn't perform here, I think we'll definitely see her on the team this summer. Well, here's the class of the field. It is Anna Hopkin in the centre, our British Olympic champion, anchored that uh, four by 100 metres mixed medley relay in Tokyo to Olympic gold and a world record 52.00. She split on that. Right outside of we just missed her, Eva Okaro from Repton, the 17-year-old. Well, this is really, really interesting. She said a lifetime best to qualify. She's second fastest. There she is, second fastest into this final will never have experienced pressure like this if she can hold her nerve, if she can deliver what she did in the heats. I think she may well go because there's a 4 by 100 meters freestyle relay to be selected here. No doubt about the favourite, I think, though, uh, Molly. Yeah, I think favourite is lane four of Anna Hopkin, but as you said, great swim this morning from Eva in lane five. It's a big PB for her, so really interested to see if she can dot, um, dip into that top four. Four of the field already booked their tickets to Paris. Take your marks. The final of the women's 100 metres freestyle. Anna Hopkin right in the centre. She really is the class of this free field on sprint freestyle. She's got a fantastic 50. Won the 50 metres freestyle. That's how she booked her ticket. Right in the centre, straight arms, black hat, and already going very quick indeed. Look at the power of that stroke. Yeah, you can see the windmill arms from Anna in lane four. We always knew she's going to have a really strong start, but I think the second 50 is where we can see Freya come into action. She'll really start to claw her back. We had a really good first 50 from the youngster, Eva Ocaro in five. Love to see her make the team as well. Don't forget the top four if they go underneath the cumulative time of those top four swimmers that is set by uh, British Swimming and uh, GB Aquatics then, they will be on the uh, train to Tokyo as well. And she's going well still. No doubt about the leader though, it's Anna Hopkin. One lane closer to us, is Eva Ukara going to do it? I think she is, you know. Anna Hopkin, what a swim. 53-33, underneath the consideration time. A great swim. She did it on the 50, now she's done it on the 100. What a swim that was. 53-3, well underneath. 53.55. It's the uh, consideration time, so Anna Hopkins done it, and done it in some style. Second was Eva Ocaro, 54.4. Freya Anderson was third. A 90% Freya Anderson's third. Fourth was Freya Colbert. Well, I wonder what the selectors are going to do there, because I'm not sure they quite made it on the cumulative time, but Freya Anderson's much quicker than that. Medi Harris is also really quick as well. They could still take that relay, maybe, you know? I think they might. So yeah, just 0.08 outside of that automatic relay qualification. So, so tight, very close. But as you said, so much potential, so much room for improvement from Freya. We have Medi. There's the likes of Lucy Hope already on the team too, who has a PV of 53.8. So, so much potential there for that relay. Well, it really was. What a great swim from Eva Ocaro. 
54-46. Lifetime best for her to get silver medal. Brilliant swim from her. Here's the result then. Anna Hopkin wins 53-3. A really great swim from her underneath that nomination time. Eva Okara, great from her silver medal. And Freya Anderson, amazing. And they're talking to John Mason. Well, I'll tell you what, she's done it again. You did it in the 50, Anna, and you absolutely smashed that, did it again, hitting that nomination time for the women's 100. You're going to Paris. For a, you're going to be busy. Uh, you know, you came in here with a job to do, and you've done it just across the board, across the week. You've got to be over the moon with it. Yeah, I'm happy with uh, the two swims and the consideration times in uh, double British champion, but <laughs> would have liked a little bit quicker in that race, but um, I've put together some really good races this year so far, so it's a lot to build on going into Paris. And sort of giving you confidence as you head towards that, right? The trajectory is there, you're on the right path. Yeah, definitely, and um, had some good times at Worlds earlier this year, and it's probably the fastest I've been at a British championship, so puts me in good stead going forwards towards the summer. Well, look, congratulations, it's been amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for the incredible Anna Hopkin. Eva, I have to say, uh, you had a stunning performance today. A PB in the heats, you come back here, you put in a performance like that, a silver medal. You've put yourself in a really good position in front of those selectors for that relay. So tell me what's going through your mind. Um, well, it's a really amazing opportunity to race against some of the best. And uh, two PBs in one day, so I mean, can't really ask for much more. You can't complain. Well, look, I can't wait to see what hopefully you're doing over the summer. She's going to be amazing. Big things to come. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Eva Caro. That's all right. And Freya, uh, it's great to have you here. You know, I didn't think you were going to be swimming at all this week, and here you are doing 100, coming off the back of glandular fever. Um, how did that feel? Um, it wasn't too bad, actually. I came yeah. in here with no expectations, and obviously I've been watching from the start of the week. I just had such bad FOMO, so I just really wanted to get in and amongst there. Um, yeah. And it's a pretty good time, so I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. And testing yourself off the back of an illness like that, it's always like, how's it going to be? How's my body going to feel? What are we going to put up? It's got to sort of make you... I don't know, calm you down a little bit, I suppose, as we head towards the summer, that you're in this position. Yeah, definitely. I think this meet I was going to use as a bit of a checkpoint just to see where I'm at. You know, I've not returned to full training yet, so to get on the 54 mids is pretty... It's all right. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. She's so good. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your British medalists. Well, that relay, I, I think uh, it'll be really disappointing if they didn't choose that i think the relay has qualified in terms of the right to go but uh, if you add up the swimmers times the first four they haven't quite met the time that the british selectors were wanting them to achieve in order to automatically pick them so it's going to have to end up being a discretionary selection but if they do it's going to be hard not to take either a car isn't it what a selection meeting that's going to be it really is going to be fascinating what would you do molly renshaw I think they have to take them. Relays are so exciting at the games, and we have team players like Freya who always steps up and performs. Um, so yeah, I think it'd be a shame not to see them there, and to have Eva have that opportunity at just 17 years old would be great. Yeah. Eva Akara on the left-hand side in the centre there. Well, she's slight of stature, but my goodness me, she packs a punch, doesn't she? That 50 freestyle was awesome. Just won the 500 as well. Two titles, 50 and 100. And there's uh, Freya just going through in, uh, in the lead. So they're just coming right in front of us now, right in front of the commentary, commentary position. Uh, there we go. And that's Freya Anderson. And that one is uh, <laughs> right in the centre there. It's Anna Hopkin. Great moments this. And I wonder if Eva Caro expected to be coming and signing one of those giant medals. I'm not sure. You know, she's had a great PB this morning, but. What a confidence boost for her, you know, especially if she is going to the games this summer, that sets her up perfectly for that. And it really has. Well, next race up, this event is the event that everybody in British swimming has been waiting for. It's the final able-bodied race. It's the men's 200 metres freestyle. There's the junior final, then there's the B final, then there's a Paris para final, and then there's the... A final. Take your marks. The junior final of the men's 200 metres freestyle. Well, this is fascinating because uh, in the heats this morning, 
Lane four, Luke Hornsey went very quick indeed. He went 150.7. Absolutely brilliant swim that was. Underneath the junior consideration time by uh, nearly a second. And in five, just uh, in that yellow hat, one lane closer to us from the, uh, the leader at the moment is uh, Gabriel Shepherd of City of Leeds, who went 49.8 for 100 metres freestyle as a junior. Last year, no juniors qualified for the Junior European Championships on the men's 100 metres freestyle. This year, there's been seven. Wow, the, the depth in, in male freestyle in Britain is just getting stronger every year. And this is a straight um, junior final. We have no juniors progressing past this, which is probably less of a surprise than the backstroke, you know, to make the B finals, to make the A finals this. Everyone had to really be on their game this morning. So straight junior final here. The time they're targeting for the European juniors is 151.54. Well, talking about 200 metres, this is freestyle. It's uh, right at the top there when lane number two, actually, is Henry Gray of Chelsea and Westminster. And on the 200 butterfly, he got a bronze medal as a junior. Bronze on the 200 fly. It was a great swim from him. He's swimming well at the moment, but the big boys right in the centre now starting to go. In four, it's Luke Hornsey. In five, it's Gabrielle Shepherd. And four has really taken off, hasn't he? Gray's trying to go with him up there in two. Absolutely, yeah. Great start there from lane four. And... Interesting to see how strong he can bring it back. It's going to be a bit of a dogfight down this last 50. We certainly is. And uh, look in the yellow hat there of the city of Leeds, Gabriel Shepherd, probably the uh, the club of the meet here, I think, at this 2024 Aquatics GB Swimming Championships. And he's holding on well as uh, Luke Hornsey in the centre, but Shepard's coming back. Shepard's having a go. The yellow hat of Shepard, is he going to get the touch? I think he did. Oh, my goodness, two one-hundredths of a second, splitting first and second. Both set lifetime bests. One by one tenth of a second from the swim that he set this morning to qualify for the European Juniors. And Gabriel uh, Shepard, 1.7 seconds, I think, underneath his lifetime best. Brilliant from him. Yeah, great swims all around. And top three swimmers there all getting under the European Junior qualifying time. Wow. What a relay that's going to be. Luke Hornsey, Gabriel Shepard, David Annis, Jacob Mills. They've got some uh, reserves there as well if they need them. Uh, Henry Gray will surely be going to the European Juniors with his 200 fly swim. Well, that's the junior final. Done and dusted. Very quick indeed from those uh, those young men. Next final up is the, uh, the B final. And as you said to Molly, no juniors in the B final or the A final. Probably something to do with the fact that it's been utterly, ridiculously quick. Yeah, following on from the 100 earlier this week, even seeing Max Litchfield in the B final. So that just proves the depth that we have in this event. Um, all boys had to be really on it this morning, catching up with Duncan yesterday. He knew he had to be on it this morning. Um, I think he qualified in sixth. So it really is proven we have world champions, Olympic champions. Um, I think we have around seven Olympians in the, in the A final. So just so much depth in this event. There's Charlie Hutchinson. He's uh, in lane number three from uh, Loughborough Performance Centre. There's Max in four. He's going to Paris. He's going on the 400 medley. He broke the British record to do that. He needed to. And there's Cameron Curl in five. I tell you what, we've got some cracking swimmers in this. Uh, lane six as well. There he is, Jacob Whittle. This B final, you know, most countries would be utterly delighted to have this quality of swimmer in their A final, all of them. In Britain at the moment, men's 4 by 2 is just off the scale. Olympic champions in the 4 by 2 free relay. And for a good reason. We've got outstanding 200 freestylers here. Take your marks. Men's 200 metres freestyle B final. And Max Litchfield right in the centre just missed out on qualifying for the big final. In fact, he was ninth and his brother was eighth, so his brother went through, Joe, and he just missed out. A brutal. Yeah, really close. And like we said, you really have to be on your A game in the heats for these freestyle events. But Max already on the team. He broke the British record in the 400 IM earlier this week, so pressure's off for him. But great start there from lane five, Cam Carl, turning first in a 24.52. Well, Alexander Paints is uh, going with him as well, just two tenths of a second behind. But... Well, fascinating race tactics on these 200. Very clearly, this guy's just decided to go out and see if he can hold on. Cam Curl of Millfield going very quickly down this first 100 metres of this 200 metres freestyle B final. I tell you what, this is very quick indeed. 
50.9 for a B final, 100 meters freestyle split, come on. I think Cam would have probably expected to be in that A final, so maybe got something to prove here, but has a personal best of 146.62, so be interested to see how close he can get to that. 50.9 to the 100, I do hope he can hold on. I do hope he does something really special here because that would also set the Kahoojis up, the guys in the A final as well. Not that they need it because it's the most ridiculous A final. Here we go, 50 metres to go, curl over first. Litchfield's turn is outstanding, that red uh, hat up there in four. And Charlie Hutchison's turn in the uh, one lane up is also really good. Charlie Hutchinson match looking really strong here. That, brought, um, that last wall really set up nicely into this last lane. Well, who's going to get the touch here? Max Litchfield looks like he's paced it very well, but Charlie Hutchinson of Loughborough Performance Centre really swimming well. Silver on the 400 medley to uh, Litchfield, and he gets the touch here. 147.66 wins the B final of the men's 200 metres freestyle. The B final, 147.6. Most countries would be utterly delighted with that with an A final, and it's the B. The winner, Charlie Hutchinson of Lapra Performance. Second, Max Litchfield, 148-0. Third, Alex Painter from Millfield, 148-8. Wow, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so nice to see. He's trained so hard for so many years now, and he was such a great junior, and since moving to Lapra under um, David Hemmings, I think having Max to train alongside has been great for him. Charlie Hutchinson, 147.66 for 100 freestyle. 1.1 second lifetime best, wins the B final. His teammate Max Litchfield in second, Alex Painter in third. Wow. I think I might have said it, the B final. Well, Paul Noble, straight over to you. There's no rest here. This is another cracking final, isn't it? It certainly is, and David could be in for couple of fast times here, some big point scores, hopefully. There's the two guys about to lead us out, Harvey Phillips and Linda Longhorn will be first out in this men's 200 freestyle para Paris final. Harvey Phillips, a 19-year-old, well, enjoying himself here. He's had some great swims this week in the S4 class. Some great battles against this man, Lyndon Longhorn. I thought Lyndon had finished after the 50 backstroke. I said to him that, did you finish the programme? He says, no, no. Looking forward to the 200 freestyle. So Lyndon and Harvey, they're in the S4 class. They're in the outside lanes. Jack Milne, the first of the centre lanes. They're all in the S14 class. All swimmers with an intellectual impairment. Mark Tromsett already made nomination time on backstroke earlier in the week. And Cameron Burncombe. He also made a nomination time on 200 medley. Louis Lawler. So a couple of good swims. 100 freestyle was very good for Louis Lawler. City of Glasgow swimmer. Dylan Broom from Torvine Dolphins. Nice swim in the heat, 202.15. But he has been under the two minute mark before. The only man under the two minute mark in qualification was William L. Large. What a week he has had. 100 freestyle world record breaker a few days ago. A world record is a very fast 152.40 held by Ristan. It's Cameron Byrne Kim. Can he dip under a standard again? Will Ellard Cameron Vernco, Mark Trump set. They've all got nomination times in other events. Where's Lyndon in the outside lane? Harvey Phillips, closest to us. He will have their own private battle in the S4 class, remember? The points for the swimmers will determine who takes the gold, silver, and bronze. How close you can get to the world's best time for the past two years. It's probably going to be the centre lanes who are going to have the, the biggest points totals, but we'll have to wait for Lyndon and Harvey to finish. They're going to be around about 3.30. Take your marks. Two swimmers in the outside lane. Expect somewhere around about the 3 minutes 30 mark, 3 minutes 20. Lyndon, the British record holder in 3.22, so 
Guys in the middle. I'll be a little bit faster. Around about the two minute mark. And of course, for that nomination, standard of 156.13. Few of them will be hoping to dip under that two minute mark to claim another nomination time or even the nomination time for the first time in the case of Dylan Broom and Louis Lawler and Jack Mel. So will El Ardra, what a start he has had. The 100 freestyle record breaker. We saw him swim in the Olympic events as well. Very good junior swimmer, well, just 18 years of age a few days ago. And Lyndon has the edge over Harvey as they go over that first 50. But coming to the halfway mark now for Will Ellard, 54.58. A couple of tens down on the world record split, which was set by Rhys Dunn. Rhys Dunn was Great Britain's biggest medal winner in the pool in Tokyo on the male side. So Will Ellard has got a hard act to follow, but he's had a fantastic week, Will Ellard. He's been one of the stars of the para swimming in the male side. Three nomination times already for Willard. He stretches away at the front of the field here. Dylan Broom in second in 127.60. So it's going to be Will Ellard against the clock. Just going over at the halfway point is Harvey and uh, Lyndon. But coming into the final stages now, Will Ellard will keep an eye on the clock. The British record, the world record is 152.40. It's going to be very close for Will Ellard. Very close indeed, 152.40. Oh, and he's equaled it. 152.40. It's another equal world record. Wow. Well, we saw an equal world record for Olivia Newman Baronius yesterday. We've got another one. 1,000 points exactly. Will Ellard, fantastic swimming. Dylan Broom was second in 158.28, just outside the nomination time but another world record for this young man 18 years of age just the other day what a birthday week he's had well Lyndon and Harvey still in the pool I wonder what they can post the S4 swimmers I think a thousand points is going to be out of the reach of Lyndon Longhorn and Harvey Phillips that's for sure but I'm sure, well, I hope the crowd is going to get behind these two swimmers. The final action in the pool for the multi-classification swimmers here at these Aquatics GB Swimming Championships 2024, incorporating these uh, Olympic and Paralympic trials. And Lyndon Longhorn has the edge now over Harvey Phillips as he comes down into the last 15 metres. He is the British record holder. 322.00. He's not going to be a million miles away from this, you know. 322.00. Lyndon Longhorn, the Tokyo Paralympian. He's not far away at all from his own British record. 324.63. And the final parasimmer to complete the distance will be Harvey Phillips. Big cheer from the crowd for the young 19 year old Harvey Phillips. Certainly one to watch for the future. He's had a fantastic week here in London. But what about this man? <laughs> Sensational week for Will Ellard from St. Felix School. 154, 152.40. Unbelievable to see another equal world record. Olivia Newman Baronius <laughs> equaled it in the butterfly yesterday, as we said, in the S14 class. Will Ellard's done exactly the same, 150-240, fantastic stuff. And he looks a real star on the freestyle events. This 200 freestyle is a, a Paralympic event, of course. He's achieved the nomination time for that, and he is going to be one to watch when they get to Paris. Paris selection is coming next week. 1,000 points, an equal world record for Will Ellard of St. Felix School. Dylan Broom in second, the Welsh swimmer to, from Torvine. And Louis Lawler from City of Glasgow on the podium in 201.94. And the medalists are down with John Mason. Will Ellard has done it again. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a round of applause for a world record? <laughs> Equal a world record. Now, Will, that's not your first re world record of this week. 
You have been spectacular. Uh, it's all come together for you. So tell me how your week's been. Oh, yeah, it's been a long week, but that was the main one at the end of the week, um, which I wanted to get over and done with at the start of the week, but um, it was at the end, so, and that's the one I've been trying to get the world record for like the last um, 10 months, maybe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's massive relief, I've got it, yeah. Massive relief, well, it's yours. Congratulations, and another British title. You also got that nomination time, so congratulations. I think you're going to do big things over the summer. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Will Ellard. Dylan, the program's over and done with. You said you've got a week off now, but it's been a great week, obviously, being here at London and getting to race some of the boys. Oh, yeah, it's been, it's been a really good week. Um, I mean, I haven't I've had, I've really had the best block training leading into this, but my God, I smashed that. It's faster than com my Commonwealth time, which yeah. I'm like, really happy about. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You can't get better than that, right? Exactly, no, you can't. So, yeah. We'd love to see it. Well, look, congratulations on that silver medal. And Lewis, I, uh, I, I spoke to you the other day outside. You were saying to me, you know, it could have gone better. I wasn't too happy with that. But you're here with the bronze medal, finishing off your week on a high. No, I couldn't have been more happier. It's, I've not been quite at my best at this competition, but to finish off with a bronze, I couldn't be happier. Right. We love to see it. Well, look, congratulations. That was a great swim from you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your British medalists. Well, well done, guys. Great way to finish these multi-class events. And, well, these medals continuing their family theme. It's Lily Ellard, Will Ellard's sister, making these presentations. Louis Lawler on the medal podium for the first time, as is Dylan Broom. But they all played second fiddle to the man in the middle. What a great swim that was, and what a great week for the 18-year-old, just 18 this week, Will Ellard. Ah, oh, there's the, a hug from a sister, Lily Ellard. Great way to finish the multi-classification para programme. Team will be selected very shortly this week. Be interesting to see who makes it. I can tell you, Will Allard. Allard certainly should be there. Well, the most anticipated final of the week is the 200 freestyle for men. Wow. What are we in store for here? Well, John Mason met one of the main contenders for this one, Matt Richards, earlier this morning. At 147, just to make it into that final is wild. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, we've seen it across all the freestyles this week. The depth we've got nowadays is unbelievable. Um, it's in a better place than we've ever had it before in Britain. So, uh, yeah, it's really exciting, both for the for the relay and also just for that race tonight. It's going to be a hell of a ding-dong. Uh, certainly an amazing one for us to watch. Uh, you know, and you talk about the relay there, that men's 4 by 2 Britain has been, like, dominating that. Uh, it's something that we sort of stand at the top of the world in. Um, and you can see that here. Across the field, 1 to 8 is just the best in the world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've just got such great pedigree in the, in the event. You know, not only as a relay, but also individually we've got you know so many great individual stories that that have come through that event over the last 10 years or so and you know that knowledge and experience has been passed down from you know jimmy all the way down to me and to the next guys coming through so yeah we've got we've got a really exciting event it's not going to be all our way in the summer on that four by two but yeah i think we'd be lying if we said we weren't feeling good well look good luck it's going to be an amazing show an amazing way to finish the night yeah absolutely well, there we heard from Matt Richards. I tell you what, it has been an incredible week, but it is about to get even better. I'm so excited to finish off our, uh, our racing here with the men's 200 freestyle. I couldn't pick who's going to win it, so we thought we'd head out and ask some fans who were their predictions were. I think Duncan Scott will win the 200 metre freestyle. I think the winner of the 200 free will be Duncan Scott. I think the winner of the 200 free will be Matt Richards. I think the winner of the 200 free will be Thomas D. Let's go, Tom D. I think Duncan Scott's going to win the 200 metres freestyle. I think Tom Dean is going to win the 200 metre freestyle. I think Matt Richards is going to win the 200 free. I also think that Matt Richards is going to win the 200 free. I think uh, Duncan Scott's going to win. Uh, so my predictions is going to be Matt Richards. I think Duncan Scott is going to win the 200 metre freestyle. Well, that's uh, that about covers it, doesn't it? Who knows who's going to win the uh, men's 200 metres freestyle, but I tell you what, we're going to find out very, very shortly.
This, for me, is literally the race of the century. If I tell you who we've got in this final, you simply won't believe it. Here is Joe Litchfield. Well, he stole gold on that men's 100 meters butterfly. He was brilliant. Don't write him off because he's outstanding on the outside. Luke Turley, also a fantastic uh, sprinter freestyler. Bronze at the Commonwealth Games, set a lifetime best to qualify for this final. And here's one of the recognized big boys. It is Duncan Scott, Olympic silver medalist on the individual 200 meters freestyle, won gold on the four by two free relay. He's in seven. Kieran Bird next out. Here he is. Well, he won gold, uh, gold here on the 400 meters freestyle and looked absolutely fantastic, finished brilliantly. And next to uh, Duncan Scott, we've got James Guy. Nobody in the crowd there. None, none of those predictors mentioned this guy's name. Write him off at your peril, James Guy. His teammate's going to be next to him, Matt Richards. This is going to be so interesting. Molly, where are you going here? Oh, it's such a tough one, I think. We just have so much depth. We have so many boys already going 144s. And we have the winning team from Tokyo in this heat as well. So we have Tom Dean, Matt Richards, Jimmy Guy, and Duncan Scott winning gold in that relay. So oh, it's such a tough one, but I think I'm going to back Duncan from the outside lane. <laughs> well, here he is. This is the Olympic champion on this 200 meters freestyle. It's Matt Richards, second fastest seed. Excuse me, Olympic champion, world champion from last year's Matt Richards. And here is the Olympic champion, it's Tom Dean. So let me just run through those again in four, five, six, and seven. We've got the Olympic champion in four. We've got the world champion from last year in five. We've got an ex-world champion and double Olympic champion in six. We've got the Olympic silver medalist in seven, all on the 200 meters freestyle. Only two people can swim it individually at the Olympic Games, but all four of those men can make the Olympic team on the 4x2 free relay. This is going to be so tight. Wow. Molly Renshaw, what are you thinking here? I think the qualifying time here is not going to be the issue. It's about the top four getting their hands on the wall first, and obviously the top two getting their individual slots. There's eight men, seven Olympians, Six Olympic gold medals between them, 14 Olympic medals between them, 34 World Championship medals between them. The Olympic champion, the world champion, double Olympic champion, Olympic silver medalist and Olympic champion. All different people. What a race. The final of the men's 200 meters freestyle. There's the world champion, Richards. Massively anticipated final, this. Take your marks. The final of the men's 200 metres freestyle at this 2024 Aquatics GB Swimming Championships. And it's going to be an absolutely fascinating one. The glitterati of world swimming in 200 metres freestyle, they're all in this race fast to see Tom Dean right in the centre but who knows where the medals are going to go don't write out lanes 1, 2 and 3 they're quick, Turley, Bird and McMillan but 4 is Dean, 5 is Richard 6 is Guy, 7 is Scott 8 is Litchfield and first over well that's interesting, Richards has decided to go out quickly, fascinating yeah great front end speed there from Matt, he won the 100 earlier this week so we know he's got that front end speed but Amazing back end speed from Dino and Duncan Scott. They finished just four 100s apart at the Olympic Games, so expect to see them come home strong. Well, James Guy is going, and I said, don't write him off. As soon as he writes off James Guy, that's exactly when he sticks in a massive one. He does go out quickly. The rest of the field will come back at him. Duncan Scott's right next to him, though, so this is going to be interesting. Duncan Scott's on this side of uh, James Guy, the white hat. One lane up from James Guy in the white hat is Matt Richards in the black hat. Oh, my goodness me, and the Olympic champion is in the red hat right in the centre. He's got some work to do. But with 50 metres to go, James Guy leads from Matt Richards, Duncan Scott and Tom Dean. I honestly don't know what's going to happen down this last 50. Duncan and Dino have such strong back ends, but such a brave first half of the race there from James Guy. 
Well, Matt Richards is starting to take over. He had a fantastic 100 metres freestyle. He won that silver on the 50. And the black hat in the centre of the 2023 world champion is definitely there. But look at Duncan Scott coming through. Look at Duncan Scott closer to us. It's Richards and Scott. Who gets the touch? Richards gets it from Scott. 144.69 from a 144.75. Oh, my goodness me. That is just incredible. Well, the relay's just blown it away. That's utterly brilliant. No doubt about the relay going to Paris in a couple of months' time. But what a race that was. Matt Richards wins the massive head-to-head -head by six one-hundredths of a second from Duncan Scott in second. The first two doing the nomination time for the Olympics. The third-place swimmer was the Olympic champion, Tom Dean. And James Guy He's got fourth. Delighted for him. So all four, Richard, Scott, Dean and Guy, they are all going to Paris. There's the white hat of uh, James Guy. So pleased for him. What a race that was. Wow. So brave there from Jimmy as well. Took it out so strong. And I think a lot was riding on that event for him. You know, his 100 fly didn't quite go to plan earlier this week. So to be confirmed on the team there, I'm over the moon for him. Wow, goodness me. I mean, just the way it unfolded was extraordinary. And the Olympic champion, well, he'll be going to Paris definitely. He's on that relay, that 4 by 2 They can all get together and try and defend that title that they won in Tokyo three years ago. But what a race. And the way it unfolded with James Gay, so brave. Yeah, so brave. And I think he, he knew he kind of had to get himself out there. Matt and Matt Duncan and Dino all come back so strong down that last 50. So really had to be brave to 150 and just hold on. I'm so glad he got his hand on the wall in fourth. Gracious me, amazing. Well, right there, that was the 100 metres turn and James Guy went early. The bravery of this guy is amazing and he's still delivering. He's still going so well. He won the World Championships, the white hat of James Guy in 2015. And he's still right there with 25 to go. And uh, the black hat there right in the centre was uh, Matt Richards. Richards won it. Second was uh, Duncan Scott. Third, Tom Dean. Fourth, James Guy. Well, the band is going to get back together in Paris. Gracious me, what a race that was. The result of the men's 200 metres freestyle, the greatest race in the world in any trials. Matt Richards won it. Duncan Scott second, both underneath that to nomination time. And Tom Dean will go and James Guy will go. All of them with dirt. Way to finish the programme. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a cheer for these boys? Now there's four of us down here. I've got Jimmy here because I've been told we can confirm that this is your men's 4 by 200 meter freestyle relay for Paris. So Jimmy, I know there's a lot of pressure on that race. The, the fly didn't go how you wanted it to, but to come out here and know you're on the team now, it couldn't be a better finish to your week. Yeah, of course. It was nice to kind of track, finally qualify for the team. Usually kind of at the start of the week, I'm on the team quite early, but yeah, last day I had to wait for my place. But yeah, to qualify again for my third Olympic Games is pretty special. Yeah, amazing stuff. And to do it with these boys, congratulations. Well done, mate. I'm going to send you off that way and jump in here. Because of course, Matt, we had the 200 meter freestyle. You smashed it to the nomination time again. That is such a fun race to watch. I'm sure it is to race. It's a bit more painful than the, uh, the 50 and the 100, I'll be honest. But yeah, it's always great fun. I mean, especially racing with these boys. You know, in the summer, we'll all get to race together as part of that relay, um, which everyone knows just how exciting that is. But it's always a privilege and an honor to be able to race alongside them. And you know, you've done it in the 50, the 100, and the 200. It's super impressive to be able to hit across all three of those distances and very different races as well. Um, <clears throat> was, what was the hardest one for you, I suppose? Oh, definitely that one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's the longest distance, isn't it? So, I mean, it stings the most, but yeah, it's probably also the most fun just because there's so many different ways of swimming it. Um, as we saw tonight, but yeah, super happy with that. Well, look, congratulations, you've been amazing this week. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Richards. Uh, Duncan, as well, it's always a big, a big race to finish the week off. You get to come in here and race these boys, you've been doing it all week, but uh, a nice sort of cherry on top of the cake to know that this is your relay, these are your boys, you're going back to Paris. Yeah, you know, it's always so difficult with, you know, there's only two individual spots and, you know, it's difficult. I know I've been on the, the wrong side of that, you know, last year and, you know, at the same time, it sort of urges everyone on. You know, there was real good quality in that race. You know, it's quite exciting for the four by two, but yeah, it's a tough way to end the, end the week. You know, you're just, that two three is always in the back of your mind, but you know, another exciting one. And uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, well, look, congratulations on that silver medal, mate. And another nomination time.
Come on, Dunks, I'll squeeze around here. Tom, I'll jump on this side of you, mate. You know, it's been an interesting week for you, ups and downs, sort of putting together a lot of different races, a very busy program. You're going back to Paris for, for different things, but just why don't you sum up your week for us and, and sort of how it was for you and your, your thoughts on it? Yeah, you know, coming here and qualifying Paris was exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. Did that on my first race, did that on the 2am. I knew it was going to take a momentous effort against these boys, but we're going back to Paris. We have an Olympic title to defend, and uh, unfortunately I've got... Loads of family and friends here supporting me, so I'm, I'm very lucky. That's the main thing, so thank you very much. Hey, look, you're always amazing to watch. I love watching you boys do it. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last time, please give it up for your British medalists. Well, I'm still in shock, I have to tell you, it's uh, absolutely brilliant, it really was. Well, the medals have been presented by a super fan. One lucky fan was uh, selected, that's uh, Sam Bush, who's presenting those medals. What a great moment for him. On the right-hand side, it was Olympic champion right in the centre. It was the world champion on the left-hand side, Olympic silver medalist, and now joined by, joined by uh, Jimmy Guy. And I've got to tell you, the Olympic medals, 14 Olympic medals amongst those guys, 34 World Championship medals, two double Olympians right there, and that is your men's 4x200 metres freestyle relay that won in Tokyo, and they're going to be going back to Paris to try and defend that title, and wouldn't that be something special? That was the greatest domestic 200 metres freestyle trial I have ever seen. Utterly brilliant. Wow. So, well, that's the end of the uh, able-bodied swimming here at the uh, 2024 Championships. Utterly fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Well, I tell you what, what an incredible, incredible, incredible week. Finishing with that men's 200, Molly, Ellie, I just can't put into words what that felt like. That felt like we were at a major right then. The crowd in here, the racing, um, but it was so nice to see Jimmy finally get his place on in the final race of the night. Absolutely, and I think we always knew that was gonna be probably one of the most exciting races of the week, you know. We've had so much depth in that event for so many years, and yeah, so happy for Jimmy. I know this week hasn't gone quite to plan for him, so to get it at the last minute, I'm over the moon. Yeah, and of course, on the power program as well, we saw another world record tonight. Will Ellard, when I tell you, he has impressed me so much this week, oh, Ellie. Same here. He has literally just blown the water out with these S14s to get that world record in the 100 meters, but then also to tie world record tonight in the 200 meters freestyle. That world record was fast, set by Reese Dunn back in Tokyo to get that gold medal and then just to do it tonight by Will, the youngster as well, 18 this week, so what a great 18th birthday week he's had to do two world records in a week. He's going to be one to watch in Paris this summer. Definitely, and I think we've been seeing that quite a bit. It's sort of been a bit of a theme this week, right? Like we have the veterans, the people we're used to seeing being on top. This week we really saw a lot of younger people stepping up to that mark. Eva in that uh, the Women's 100 as well put in a stellar performance. I think they were 0.06 off the automatic relay qualification. So, you know, there's been some surprises I suppose, um, but some good ones like the the state of Aquatics GB and the para side and the swimming side, it's in a good place for the future. Absolutely, yeah, and even the junior finals, you know, we've seen so many qualifying times, I don't know how the selectors are going to pick a team of only 30 because <laughs> I think they've had nearly 60 people hit the qualifying times, so really tough decisions for them, but also just looking really promising for the future of Aquatics GB. Definitely, and I think uh, what this is setting us up for is a really exciting summer. I know we've got a lot of trials from around the world to get through as well to see other teams, but I'm feeling pretty good for Aquatics GB on swimming and para swimming. Yeah, very much so. It's going to be an exciting summer. So, so excited. Like, I was nervous just then watching those boys. And I was thinking, like, oh, my gosh, how are they going to do it again in the summer? But they are. You know, like you mentioned, both of you, Aquatics GB, we are seeing this incredible talent coming through and at the perfect time as well. And to be able to cope under the amount of pressure that all of these 
individuals have gone through this week to do it again in the summer we're just going to be incredible i'm already excited can we go already i am as well i can't <laughs> wait and it's paris you know it's paris uh but it's of course not just the swimming and paris swimming going on we've got the diving championships coming up very very soon if you haven't got your tickets make sure you check them out speedo aquatics gb diving championships sandwell aquatic center we're going back to birmingham for the 23rd to the 26th of may 2023 tickets are on sale next week at aquaticsgb.com so that's the next one. I have to say, thank you so much, Molly, Ellie, of course, Paul and Andy in commentary as well. I have a great time working with you. We hope you've enjoyed watching all of our guests that have come into the studio to hang out with us as well, and um, especially to you at home who have been tuning in, uh, cheering on our team. Make sure you do over the summer. It's been an absolute pleasure hosting, um, and I can't wait to do it all again next year. Stay safe, and we'll see you then.